Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Education October 16th work session. We'll start off with our presentations, budget planning. All right. Um, let me pass these out. Pass these off. Yes, sir. This is your work. Did you get these, sir? You had one? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yours is special. Okay. <laughs> They're coming this way. Coming this way. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Fester. Much appreciated. Everybody's got a copy. Did I? Okay. Did I? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Oh, that was for you. Oh, okay. Good evening, board members and Dr. Kane. Tonight, we begin our journey in developing the 2021 operating budget. <laughs> 2021. Yeah. You make it sound so fun. <laughs> um, before us are nearly five months of hard work developing a budget that speaks to the needs of the school system without presenting a budget that is overly burdensome to the commissioners. Do we need more resources both in and outside of the classroom? Yes. Could our schools benefit from additional technology and instructional supports? Yes, absolutely. And do we have unfunded mandates and increases in normal operating costs? The answer to that is yes also. These are just a few topics we need to discuss as we craft and eventually balance this budget to the revenue afforded us. Our approach to developing the 2021 budget can be summed up really simply in three ways. We can ask for all the money that we need as an addition to the current budget. We can move funds and reallocate resources to minimize the request, but we'll still need to request additional funds. You will see our first attempts at doing that tonight. Thirdly, we balance the budget on the back of the existing base budget. That means going in and cutting current resources to provide the dollars to fund mandatory budget increases. Before you is a working document, which we'll call the line item workbook. This document provides a summary page, which is your color page on the front, um, listing category and object level of the current 20 budget, uh, uh, the 20 approved budget compared to the 21 requested budget which is as you know is a work in progress and there's just some small amount of work that's been done on the 2021 budget um, and then a summary is the difference the detail pages following behind it by state category provide you with the five years of historical expenditure data the current year fy20 approved budget the requested 2021 budget which again is still a work in progress and a difference column so you can see the changes per line item with that, I'd be happy to go through the document. We can have some generalized discussions about where we're going forward. Um, open up the floor. Dr. Kane, do you have anything you want to yeah, add? I sure do. So you, we're starting the budget process a little earlier this year, and that is so that we can I can make my request earlier, but it gives you more time to deliberate and look at the budget right, and, and decide what you want to do. We still have to receive from schools their budget requests. So we'll get budget requests from schools on November 1, and then we'll get budget requests from central office November 8. So this will go on for several months, and you know we'll sort of go back and forth, and we'll present to you what the requests are, and then you'll make some decisions about what uh, we can approve, what we can not approve, what we might have to put on the table for later. OK, so uh, we did this so that hopefully, you know, if, if we know what you are looking for, we can get some data for you and hopefully we'll be able to do it in a, in a way that we won't be scrambling, you know, on board meeting day. So we're just trying to get ahead of the process. OK. Well, one of the questions that came, I, I personally liked the way it was presented last year with the the difference that made it easier to explain it to the commissioners for one thing and to the public of what we were doing. However, there was some concern that we didn't know exactly what was in the existing budget from the year before. There was some confusion. That's why we wanted to discuss it. Right. Because if that number is not correct or not what we this this particular board feels is something we want to do, then then the that can be adjusted which then changes the next year's mm -hmm. request. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was the angst that some members had. It had been a while since um, we had a good understanding of what we actually had in it. And okay. that was a budget basically you did not create. I don't think you personally created. So you went with that based on, um, well, the CFO, because he was new, and we went with that, assuming that was correct, and then the delta is what we, we fought for or talked about and worked with. 
So, so that was the main reason that we, in, in our opinion, that we wanted to start earlier because there wanted to be a better understanding of what is in each individual budget mm -hmm. item. Mm -hmm. So, sure. just because yeah, last year, you know, we we've always had a, a document, the published document, which is very similar um, to what's before you tonight. Um, this has, of course, more more data. So this is the line item that is the approved budget. Last year, we also used that five year. Um, summary sheet that was a little bit of a disconnect between what you were seeing on there and then how it looked in the budget book. So what we did this year when we talked with the exec team, well, let's combine both of those. So now you have a document that looks very similar to the published budget book with the historical data um, associated with it. And with that, then you get to see not only will you just see what the line is called, there will be a brief description underneath each one of those lines. That would be helpful because that's, that's what a you lot have. of stuff that you have that, in front of you. That's what you have. Okay, so that's yeah. a lot of stuff to try to absorb. Yeah, so yeah. that's why we put the two documents together because while the data is the same, it was two documents that you had to manipulate. And I, we didn't think you were making, the, the board was making the connection. So you've got that trend data, you've got the actual, right? And then you have what we approve for 20, and then we'll put what the requests are. And that requested 21 line is basically what Mr. Fister is saying. It's a work in progress because we don't have all of the information just yet. So, so on that particular line, you won't see too many changes. Maybe one change to some permanent salary wages. That was one position that we were going to request as the maintenance position that we didn't get last year. But you're not going to see any other changes to the full-time salary because I'm not finished the analysis of what that negotiated cost is going to be for next year. So what you're seeing in this document right now was our first first blush at some of the things where we think we can reallocate funds or areas where we know we're going to have to request an increase uh, above. If you look at the front cover sheet and just go to the immediate bottom right-hand corner, there's a number that's $722,300. That's the number right now as we did first flush <coughs> of some of the things that we're going to need to add. You know, we have the minimum wage that's coming in. We have the transportation issues we're trying to resolve, the special that's ed nice. transportations, the substitutes, all of those. Right now, first blush, it adds up to $722,000. But but if we, if we might be able to, let's just go ahead and start from the beginning. Yep. We just want to give you that little bit of background so that you could know what changes we made from last year just to try to make this process a little uh, smoother for everybody. So, Mr. Fister, if you start from the beginning. Okay. So, the, on your first, the color page, which, which you see up, up top, is, again, the first blush at our FY21 requested budget broken out by the mandated state categories. So, administration, mid-level instruction, reading down. And then going across your object level, salaries and wages, contract and services, supplies, other charges, equipment, and then transfers. And transfers are just monies that we transfer generally to other LEAs for services. That includes non-public placements, out-of-county tuition, the special ed consortium, and then the fee for being part of the ESMIC consortium as well. And that's what the transfers are. The middle section, the blue, the blue header, that's our current budget right now, FY20's approved budget as this um, board approved um, back in June. And then the third box is, again, just the difference between the two. And as you can see, there's very little change, as noted with the, um, in the green column that says not updated to reflect negotiated agreements. So there's very little change in the salary and wages other than known things for our, our temporary help. Um, and then, again, the difference between um, <coughs> each of the two, the two boxes above going by state category, which nets to that $722,000 number. That I saw before. So this is more of a of a snapshot. We will still be working also from the document we provided last year, where we can align these resources that we're asking for in our strategic areas. So we're still going to work from this, but this I guess will probably be our primary document, which will then summarize to this, so that we can see what's going on. If you flip so the seven twenty two is where you are so far on the work in progress. Yes. Okay. Got yes. It. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. What were you requesting? Above this current budget, or what you're looking at, above this current budget, some mandated, some are already in. Some, it, it, it's basically right sizing the budget as to where we're experiencing expenditures, as we've talked about with transportation, the continued <coughs> growth there, um, and then special ed. This is just right sizing. We, you, as we go through these individual pages, you'll see some pluses of a thousand and some minuses, uh, you know, of a thousand. And we've tried to offset where we could based on the historical data and what we are or are not spending. Um, and then, of course, addressing the areas where we've historically spent more 
but don't have the budget to support that. And you'll see that in the subsequent pages. Oh, oh, I'm assuming that from what I'm hearing, we're on a two-year contract with the yes. teacher. So we're, we've done one year and we're on our second year. Yes. That number's not in here. That's not reflected in here yet. Yes. <clears throat> I'm assuming that could be. Quote, well, last year our raises were $2.4 million. Does so that include Kerwin, though? No, Kerwin was another 544 on top of that. Have we received that yet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we so were approved for that funding. Okay. What we're looking at right now is possibly over $3 million. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. More. More, not 720. Correct. And again, that's total funding. That's not just all coming from the county. Right. You know, with the Kerwin Commission and all these formulas that are now just starting to bubble up with what was released yesterday, you know, it, it's it's a long shot as to be able to give you an idea as to what's going to be coming from the county or mandated. I, I can tell you exactly what will need to come from the county by maintenance of effort um, once the enrollment calculations but, but, but are finalized. What I if we've committed to a contract for this year to our teachers, uh -huh. what is that going to cost us? Us. I'll have that number for you. It, 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 within a week or so. Yeah. What did we agree, agree to just to review on that second year? It's um, oh, step that plus one and a half percent on a COLA, plus the Kerwin not, dollars. Is that something we're not talking about in good discussions? Well, it's, 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 it's what it's we public. agreed to. That's it's, obvious. Okay. Yeah. I just want yeah. to know. Yeah, yeah. now we won't get into the, well, any of those I, discussions. I don't need a number signed. if we're not supposed to have it publicly right now. But what I'm just saying is, you know, when I see one number, that's not it's reflective not done yet. of yeah. what the yeah. budget's going to even okay. look like. Uh, this, because this if is we've just, already committed to other things. This is just our oh, first we'll have months of discussion. right sizing the current budget. That's that's all this is. But this was more about you understanding what the documents are, understanding the data that's in the document, and we know that you wanted to go line by line, so we sort of have a description in the category so that you know what's in it. So say, for example, a couple of months ago, somebody said something about um, subscriptions and um, publications and thought perhaps that that literally meant magazines and so we have given a description of what that line is right so everybody understands what's in there with what negotiated budget we did Kerwin is are there gonna be state dollars to match whatever Kerwin so we have a set amount of dollars from Kerwin which is five hundred and forty four thousand dollars for teacher incentives for the teacher it's a continuation and it's not an additional 544 it's the same 544 that we got in the, we have in the current year that be used to offset the negotiated agreement it it it's, enhanced it cannot be used to offset no it's not a supplanting it's supplement to so but it, but, but it won't require more funding for the, this 544 will require more local funding yes yes it's it as as already negotiated and agreed to with because we have a two-year agreement with the with the um county commissioners with the teachers they, they know what the current yes. funding yes. is yes it's it's we're going to do the same thing this year that we did last year or 21 is going to be the same as 20. so we got 544 for 20 fy 20 budget for teacher incentives and we are anticipating the same 544 for, for fy 21 yes. from kerwin but then, but could, then we possibly could ask the county commissioners for additional we have to well, we have to to meet the negotiated agreement we have to ask the county for additional funding and above. aware of all this correct yes. And in order to get that 544, because we recognize that you came afterward, in order to get that 544 for teacher incentive, we have to meet certain threshold in order to qualify for it because it's sort of in the shape of a grant. So you have to do certain things. You have to meet certain criteria in order to continue to get it. I, and I, I, I'm not, the reason I'm questioning, every time sure. you spend money mm -hmm. and they give you money, mm -hmm. it comes with so many strings, it costs you money. And it and, does. And then it is where we want to put it. And, and, and it does. System, and that kind of concerns me sometimes. But with Kerwin dollars, we don't get that type of discretion because the way the Kerwin dollars come, it, it is in the, like I said, like a grant. So they are restricted funds. So if it is for teacher incentive for pay, then you have to use it for teacher incentive. You got to meet a certain threshold in order to get it. If it is for special education, you have to use it for special education. It's restricted. So it's not like we get 544,000 and we decide how we want to use it. It's not that. And, it, and it's certainly not to be used to supplant existing funding that was on top of. And I think I've asked this question earlier, but we got 543 this past year. Kerwin's given us another 544. The same 544. 544. I just want to be clear that same, same, same 544. Same 544. Third year. They're working that's what on the, that's year. what it's getting released and going to be debated in this legislative session this well, year. Everybody understands it might not be here the third year. 
I know you tell me it's going to be. 99.9999% sure that that will be funded, <laughs> yes. But, but it's 99.999, but if they don't, it's not there. It's and then we there. would, and then, then we would, there. by state law, we have the right to go in and renegotiate our contracts okay. if the funding does not Probably exist. Have, it just everybody knows this yeah. because, you know, everybody thinks they've got it, you spend it, and then all of a sudden somebody pulls it off the table. Yeah. And then you know who gets stuck with it. And with, with all the effort they've put into this Kerwin Commission, I can't imagine them pulling the rug out at this late hour that they would go back and pull that funding away from any of the LEAs. Mr. we are talking about the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all, I mean, let's, you know. Yeah. be realistic I, you know the way i would envision would be it would take longer to implement the kerwin recommendations than not implement any of them at all is how i would see it and that teacher incentive one was one of their biggest priorities so mm -hmm. yep okay um if you flip basically to page one as noted in the <laughs> bottom of the oh, mine for some reason i lost my page number on mine Oh, I had a duplicate set. So page one is administration. Again, the way I tried to break this up, uh, it is by the state categories. This, again, is a summary page of what's the five or six pages that might be behind it. So if you go to administration, page one, you'll see the description, the object level, salaries, contracted, supplies. Again, this is a summary page. Your actual, I apologize, it was, it, it's shaded, it was supposed to have been shaded between those two lines, between actual 15 and actual 19, but the copier didn't print it dark enough, I, I imagine. So that's a shaded area that shows you all your actuals. So you have the actuals for 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Going to the right of that vertical line is your approved budget for this year. And then our first, I guess, at the requested budget, <coughs> and then the difference between the approved and the requested. So if you're looking at this within administration, there's an $18,379 increase above current budget exclusive of salaries. Exclusive. And exclusive of salaries. Like with special ed, when we did transfers from one, well, like our contracts we did for our teachers, but we couldn't hire full times, we did contractual ones. Does that show up in this thing too i mean you wouldn't it, you, you'll see as an additional request on funding for the contract but again that's a year-by-year -year basis so if we did that transfer as part of the requested column then basically what you're doing is you're, you're you would be reducing your requested ftes in the budget to put more money in contracted and the idea would be we would want to hire those people so we would leave the ftds there we would leave the budget dollars there and if we're in the same situation next year then we would do the transfer again. But I know we asked for it for permanent employees and for instructional and stuff like that. And then sometimes it goes contractual because they can't fulfill them. And it's, from what I saw, pretty much a wash. Mm -hmm. Dollar sounds high, but with benefits and stuff, it sounds close. But when we see this contractual services additional, when you show up in the, well, I'll wait till we get to instructional. Okay, so. okay, all right. So if you flip to page two, again, these are the, the positions as listed there on the left the salaries associated with those, the approved budget, the requested, and as, you, as we talked, because the, the, the full-time positions, we haven't completed our uh, cost analysis for next year's uh, satisf satisf satisfying the negotiated agreements, those columns are blank. But this gives you an idea of the positions that are funded within the administration category. And again, the positions as they are funded and where they are funded is mandated by state law. We can't charge chief financial officer to the category of instruction or special ed. Uh, but deputy superintendent, because of his responsibilities, we can split that amongst several categories. So you may see going through here um, certain positions that you will see a partial position. And that's because the other piece is made up in different state categories. And then getting into the meat of things, as so to speak, is if you go to page three, now we're getting into the line item detail. So the first one, auditing, gives you an, a brief little description of what is required by, um, a brief description of what we're doing with those auditing dollars, the history of that auditing, and again, remaining unchanged, and no request increase or decrease in um, going forward. So back to page two, these are salaries. There, yes. Right? Okay. But we don't have like deputy, so that he's assigned to some other. Yeah, he pieces. would be in mid-level administration, mid -level. special ed, okay. health, and pupil services Split because up he. That. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can see that. 
Um, and then for reading how we read this document, if you look at software, I'm not, if we want to read each one of those, we certainly can. Um, you know, we have consultants here, um, policy website design and public information consultants. That's what we actually spent last year. But again, not a budgeted dollar amount because we were using, as uh, Mr. Smith alluded to, using those salary dollars from a position we're not able to fulfill to offset that with a consulting dollars. And that's what you're seeing there. Legal services, uh, this is your board's uh, legal representation. As you can see, it, it varies you know, widely from a low of 57 to a high of over 100 um, with a budget of 70. And our first blush is we would recommend that be increased to $95,000 based on the historical spend um, for that particular line item. And that's what you'll see throughout this document. For software licenses and trainings, what I tried to do is if there was something pertinent um, as far as a, a change that may have occurred in the current year or we may be requesting in the new year, such as things may have been coded into a different state category that really fit into another category. As we review our accounts, review uh, what MSD requires, review the financial reporting manual for Maryland Public Schools, and this is a perfect example of what we did in the current 20 budget, is there was $4,000 sitting over in the operations budget to fund our applicant tracking system in human resources. Now, yes, a lot of technology is funded out of operations. But in this particular instance, this really needed to be an HR cost. So in the FY20 budget, which is what that note there, FY20, we moved $4,000 from operation. We didn't ask for $4,000. We just, we just reallocated it. We took it from operations, and we added it to admin. And that's what that note there um, um, is saying. If we did the same thing as we were going through this budget process, and we would like to do that again for a, or a different item, for FY21, you'll see that same kind of note, and it'll say FY21. You'll see one of those a little bit later. FY21, we're moving dollars again between state categories because it's more appropriately aligned as we're supposed to report those to MSDE. And again, a lot of this is also because we're doing a scrutiny of our account spending based on the ESSA reporting at school level. So we want to make sure that if we can attribute expenditures down to the school level as best as we can. We want to be able to do that. And then, of course, also right-size our accounts um, and how else we report to MSDE, which eventually goes to the federal level as well. Testing and test scoring, that's pretty much our standardized testings. And then um, other contracted services. So we have a third-party vendor that monitors our 403B and our 457 retirement program that does all the paperwork for compliance because um, we don't have the expertise in-house. That was something that was put in place a few years ago. And what you're doing is you're seeing the costs associated with that Can there. Can you tell us who the company is? Um, it is uh, PenServe out of North Carolina. Page four. Office supplies and postage. <laughs> so this is the office supplies and postage for any of the departments that are really admin, which would be um, my office, of course, human resources, public information, um, uh, accountability, and testing. So this is the office supplies for those uh, departments and, um, and also the postage that helps support the, the, the main program, uh, the main mailing machine uh, in the mailroom. Um, and as you can see, it varies pretty much from 28000 to $44,000, depending on what may have been needed or the amount of postage that we may have sent out. Um, but we feel confident that we can keep that budget at the consistent $32,000. As we go through this, um, the reason I broke these budgets up, when we talk about like supplies and materials, we, can, we have the ability um, to if we're not going to be spending money in a certain line item, and but we need money in another line item, and the reason I bring this up is I'm going to explain it in just a second. With the sensitive supply line item, you'll see there's no budget there. But we had an anomaly where our ADP time clocks, which take care of all of our time and attendance, they had a firmware update. The firmware update wouldn't work on our existing clocks. So what do we do? We had to go buy new clocks. So that's what you're seeing there in that sensitive items is that $11,900 that we had to purchase for our ADP time clocks. But 
in instance, we may be able to save money within postage or an office supply to offset that. So those kind of transfers or those kind of things that they don't make it to your level because we were able to save it in some other level um, and we didn't require a transfer um, between funds. So when it's in a group like that, um, we have the ability again, like I said, to transfer and um, make those purchases necessary as necessary um, to keep our operations going forth. Categories like administration, mid-level administration, um, instruction between the three categories. That's where you see your transfer notice is when we're transferring like out of contracted services to a supply and material line. So you will see those. But if I'm underspending $1,000 in office supplies to overspend $1,000 in postage, because they're within that same grouping, you're not gonna see those. And we don't generally even do a budget transfer for those. Can I ask a couple questions about ADP real quick? Sure. So the the software in these new time clocks, do they automatically get sent to ADP or do we generate a form and send it to them? The updating of the software? When everybody punches in. Yes. And it's payroll week. Uh huh. So does that information automatically from the machines go to ADP or do you have to generate a report and send it to ADP? So all we use ADP for is the actual system. All of the reporting and data generation is done by us. So, so we don't use ADP to process payroll. That was my or, next question. Yes, if they no. process our payroll. It is a time management system. That's all we use from ADP. All, so everything else, all payroll is done in-house. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. And yep. we do our own taxes and that. Oh, okay. yes. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Only because mm -hmm. I do all my own HR. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. No, we don't pay. Okay, good. Yeah, I wouldn't pay an outside There are several company. time and attendance companies. ADP was the one that just happened to be picked however many years ago. Okay. Um, Thank you. But we will be looking, as I think I mentioned in What I was getting earlier. to was we don't use ADP for our payroll service. No. no. Okay. No, thank you. No, not at all. And on page five, we get into other charges. So I tried to break this up again where one page was sort of supplies, one was your other charges. There are some areas where it's a little bit greater, uh, the number of items that can fit on one page. So, of course, it's going to roll it too. Uh, but I also didn't want to give you a 300 page book to do this. So, I did condense some things. So, here, uh, the board members' expenses. So, this is your stipends and then the basically your MABE dues and everything that's required by law. As you can see, um, last year we overspent it by you know, a little under $2,000. But we feel that we can modify that by leaving the budget or just uh, accommodate that, not modify it, accommodate that. Um, by leaving the budget at the requested $40,000. But this isn't an area that really could be cut because a lot of this is mandated. Of course, we're mandated by state law for the stipends, and we're mandated by what MABE charges us to belong to their certain services. So um, eventually, as MABE's costs go up, these are the kind of things that will have to be adjusted just for the normal cost of doing business. What are our MABE dues? I can get you that detail. Um, this. I don't have it in front of me, but I can okay. certainly get that for you. Accreditation, as as we know, we're no longer part of the Middle States accreditation, so we reallocated those dollars in the current budget. You can see there was no expenditures to that last year, and there's no budget request um, for this year. But because of the historical data of what we spent in prior years, that's why it's still shown on this line item detail. Just to go back to that maybe expense, um, it pretty should be pretty standard. There's there's very little travel. I mean, there's no travel. Nobody's done travel in the board. Nobody's made any. There, now there may be a meeting like the conference, that yeah. was it. Yeah, there's, there's some of those expenses are in there, and then again, the standard MABE dues. But I can get you a breakout of Definitely. exactly what. Yeah, because I don't think anyone has made any claims for any of those meeting expenses, except that I know the conference is the only place. And that's directly paid through straight to the board. But there's also all the, like they have presentations and they have the, the workshops. I mean, somebody went to some of them. That's what some of this difference could be. Okay, oh, so that is yeah. the training workshop. Yeah, mm -hmm. Oh, yes, this is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is there is Bless no. Thank you. No, but has anyone of all five of us, no one's submitted any kind of a claim for money? No, but like Tammy said, time. when we go for even um, 
um, open access training. Right. There's yeah. a charge for that. Yeah, yeah. You go I know for that. New yeah. board member training. Yeah. There's a charge for that. Okay. But well, I would like to see the breakout because our stipend's only sixteen thousand dollars. So we got a twenty-four thousand dollar difference here. I'd like to know where it goes. Right. And you've Thank mentioned you. that before. This one, I want to make sure we get it. Okay. And the definition is what can be covered in that section. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Not that you have something in each one of those, but what can come out of that. Gotcha. So if you had no dollars for mileage, if nobody submitted mileage, that's good. It'll show zero for that, but we can. And so that's why you see travel mm -hmm. in that section. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thanks. And this is one of those justification lines that we can move funds somewhere else needed. Okay. But I, I'm, I I'm, I'm pretty sure we have funds left over every year in this group to send somewhere else. Well, Actually, last year was the first year we went over, but I don't know what our yeah, spending yeah, was prior just to that, so, that thirty thousand foot stuff. view. Keep in mind that the uh, to Miss Harlow's point, the five thousand dollars that was underspent in eighteen went to the twenty five thousand dollar over expenditure in legal fees. So right. yes, so and again, whether we transfer it or whether we just allow one to underspend and one to overspend, and of course I monitor all of that. Um, it's two different scenarios and how we would handle that. Sure. And, and it's not like it's, we have to have a request. It can just be done. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Because it's yeah. in the same uh, category. Exactly. Yep. Oh, yep. Yeah. All you're seeing as far as, just to, you know, kind of do budget, a little bit of budget 101, when you see the transfer notice, <coughs> that's, again, within category, but it's with, within, within different object, or I'm sorry, outside of different object groups. So if I'm moving salaries to supplies or contracted to equipment, you will see that. It's in the same category. So it's just a notice. It's how we, it's how we do business. When I'm transferring, in this particular case, if I were to transfer $5,000 from board member expenses to mileage and travel, because that's all in that group of other charges, we wouldn't see that. Mileage and travel, again, this is for the, for the staff uh, within that are charged to the administration category for their mileage, uh, both local and um, out of county travel. Um, and we do use the IRS standard reimbursement rate. Uh, we adjust that every year as IRS adjusted on January. We also adjust it in January. Um, subscriptions and dues, to Dr. Kane's point, this is not necessarily magazine subscriptions, so uh, it, 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 it's one of the categories that the state tells us that this is what we charge it to, subscriptions and dues, but generally it's a subscription to either a service or a due to an organization such as um, ASBO, which is the Association of School Business Officials. It's an organization that I belong to. Um, that The payment to belong to the organization would come out of this, but it's not magazine subscriptions that we're getting in the mail. In fact, most of the magazine subscriptions we get are free anyway, <laughs> yeah. so it's not that. I'd like to have that one broken out too for us. Please. Subscriptions we, and we dues? We get questions on that from the public sometimes, you know, and then we can be clearer on what we're spending it on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. They're tiny things, but there's something that jumps out to the public. Mm -hmm. um, again, meetings and conferences associated with, um, you know, any of the meetings or, or, like I said, if I happen to go to an ASBO conference or we go to a power school conference because testing and accreditation is here, those charges, you'll see those charges here. And again, it varies depending on um, who attends, where the conference is located, you know, whether it's an East Coast conference versus a West Coast conference, whether we send one person or two people, um, and it even varies by the conference itself uh, as far as the expenditure. So you can see here that it varies anywhere between six and 12 or well, $15,000. And recruiting, this is our cost um, related to um, some advertising. If we have to go out nationally and do some advertising, uh, incentives for uh, bringing teachers to our teacher fairs, um, and reimbursements if there are any to any candidates to bring them in. I don't think we've had any of those. Um, but it, it really focuses on um, diversity is what these fees, and again, it's, it, it's minimal. It's $8,500, and you can see it varies. Um, widely again year by year f um, venue by venue um, number of people that we send and the cost to attend certain things and then professional improvement and support again a small amount there just to provide some job embedded professional development for people in that particular area and then we flip to equipment and if you remember we talked about the um, the accreditation expense, that small little 
hundred dollars that was in the uh, budget, we moved that to administrative office equipment. Um, and the fact that there is no equipment, so a, an office chair that breaks or a desk that can no longer stand on three legs and it's, it's down to two, uh, we have a little bit of funding um, to be able to put that in there. Um, and we did ask for a, you know, a modest request there uh, based on the needs. And then again, the transfers here, other transfers, this is our cost uh, to be part of ESMEC, the Eastern Shore Maryland Educational Consortium. This is not the cost of the Special Ed Consortium. This is just ESMEC uh, for the superintendents and the Energy Trust and the Health Alliance, um, all of those that as part of ESMEC, this is the cost to be part of the parent organization, which supports their executive director and the fees for running that uh, consortium. So why do you call it other transfers? By state, it's when it goes to um, other LEAs or other entities, such as oh, outside the system. It's outside the system. Okay. It's an accounting thing because if we were to treat it as an expense, and that company, uh, that county, who it might be the fiscal agent, like we're talking about with the special aid consortium, if Talbot County, who's the fiscal agent for the special aid consortium, treated it as an expense, and we treat it as an expense, then between the two counties, we double counted that expense. So the state requires us to do those kind of inter-county transfers and list it as a transfer. So okay. it is an expense on our books, but it's not an expense on their books. It's an income for them. Mm -hmm. gotcha. mm -hmm. Thank yep. you. And that finishes admin. The thing is basically, to increase your what your per perception is it mainly legal fees yes if I see at the end we're at 18 three and we're 25 and we and we, and we tried to balance so and and take down. from wherever gotcha. yep mm -hmm. so mid-level administration again page seven it's the same summary that we're used to seeing and then we get into the details so mid-level administration is basically running the schoolhouse this is your principals your assistant principals your uh, the clerical staff at the schools um, also, the instructional supervisors here in the central office are, are charged to this category, and the secretaries at the central office. And that's what you're seeing on page eight, the salaries of those individuals for page the eight. last five years. Page eight. Page seven we missed. Seven is just the summary. It's the summary of that particular category. And I see we got 15,000 additional in contractual services. Yes. What's that? So, that's, so this is your summary. Uh -huh. to, so page seven is the summary of what you'll see in detail on pages eight. Gotcha. Nine, ten, eleven, wide data and eleven. Training. Yes. So again, to to bring to that point, page nine. As I mentioned about that little note, that little box to the left under consultants in FY21, we're going to transfer fifteen thousand dollars from instruction consultants because it should properly be aligned. The data wise reporting is not. It does affect the classroom, but it's not direct instruction to children. So this should be a mid-level administration expense. So you'll see in instruction, we're going to take $15,000 out of that consultant line and we'll add it here. So again, this is right-sizing. So in essence, this is a net zero change. It looks like we're adding $15,000 to the budget, but we're actually saving $15,000 in another category. So between the two, it zeroes itself out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Would you say, when, just a reminder, what the mid-level is, is the principals? So it's everything that's basically running the schoolhouse and the instructional process. So that is your principals, your assistant principals, your clerical staff at the schools, your clerical staff here at the central office, and the instructional supervisors here. Okay. And of course, a, a, a portion of um, deputy superintendent salary is here as well. You got to. And you'll see that oh, broken out position-wise. Thank you. Okay. Well, it's just principals and assistant principals. You'll see that on page eight. And you'll see where um, under central office instructional um, directional staff, that is where half of the deputy superintendent and the five and a half instructional supervisors are charged. So all of those are under that section that you don't break up their salaries into another category? No, no. Page 10, again, just very simple, office supplies for that particular um, um, offices upstairs. The school's office supplies, they really don't have an office supply account. Everything's kind of funneled through their materials of instruction allotment. This office supplies is basically the central office office supplies, um, curriculum instruction, and then printing and publishing, 
Um, what we charge here is either any outside printing that may occur or the charges as we send things to the print shop. Um, that comes back as a charge or an expense to that um, program. And with that, we feel based on the historical spend with a $3,600 budget, and you can see over the last couple of years, it's barely, well, we had $1,600 last year, but three prior years, it was well under 1000 um, So again, we feel we can cut $2,000 from there to help use that to offset other um, expenditures throughout any category. What was category it that we ended up spending double last year, almost double last year that we budgeted? recall substitutes is that what you're thinking that's uh, no, the printing area. and publishing printing. Oh, printing. we ended up approving uh 3650 this year and we only went to you know how low all the other ones were i just don't recall there must have been something well what about in administration it went up um nine thousand dollars in administration that's in the category printing and publishing which we it tells what page you're on yeah, Cam Kelly was referring to I'm page 10. 10. I know, this but uh, I'm saying she's uh, questioning that increase. We should possibly question a $9,000 increase well, as well. Your, you know, put your questions together. And, and I just wonder if he knew offhand why that, because no, that's I, a significant I, difference. And then we went back to what it usually is, so I just can't remember. Yeah, I, off the top of my head, I don't sure. Okay. I don't know. All right. We'll ask but, I, but I can start, I'll follow up as to okay. what that is. Yeah, if we just highlight the things that we're questioning, we can just shoot you an email. Yeah, so what I'd like to do, I didn't put it together. Remember last year when we were going through the final, we created a little Google sheet to create all that? I'll do that same thing. Yeah. So if we highlight your questions and throw them in there, then we'll get you I your answers. I expect you to know everything sitting here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Now there's 40,000 line, 40, lines in here. So. And, and what we could have is, Ms. Wright, to document, if you have a question, like we're jotting down areas where we need to get you more information, but Ms. Wright, if you would take notes on the questions, the specific questions that board members have, then we can make sure that we keep a sort of a running log right. um, a and idea. respond to yeah. that. So your question was about how come we approved 3650 when we actually spent 1620 is that what you're before, saying the year before for right. fy19 and then we've estimated for the next year to reduce it reduce it back so and but apparently miss harless said there was a nine thousand dollar difference in the same category okay. under oh, we'll, administration we'll so um, just to kind of reset a little bit 10. if you keep in mind the document that we worked off last year was that five-year rolling average and a lot of these decisions were based on okay we had an up year we had a down year but over five years that equals what our budget is yeah. when we have the down year we use that money to offset something that might be an up year mm -hmm. so so you if you really want to get an idea of why did we approve 3650 in FY20, we wouldn't have known that we would have spent that in FY19 because the year was going on. You would maybe want to compare it back to uh, you know a year or two prior or see some kind of a historical trend as to get an idea because you can't compare you can't set your 20 budget based on what you spent in 19 because your budget your 20 budgets developed before 19 is even finished yeah but 19 is done now so now you'll be able now to tell you us. now you address your 21s that's why it's always a two-year but now you can tell us what happened in 19 yes I can all right so yep we'll just put our questions together yep but we also have and the five-year trend ahead of it to look at too not just yeah. 19. right yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. which is 600, it is 600. and, and Mr. Carlo your question was why we approved 15 8 and um, admin for printing and publishing when we had only spent six seven six. the year, six right. four. Mm -hmm. I, I would just like to know how that added up. Right. I mean, if yeah. we spent it, we spent it. No big deal. Could have been we did a big mass printing on something that was not a yearly expenditure in the past. I just see that as a big jump. So, Ms. Harlow, if you could help me, page four was where your concern was. Right. I got it, Mr. Fister. Don't okay. worry. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think that left us on page 11. Mm -hmm. um, so communications, that is the cost for phone and internet for our schools. Um, it is charged to mid-level administ um, mid administration. Uh, state mandates that we charge it here. Um, and they even have the note in there, MSD's financial reporting manual. So this is the charge of phones at the schools, plain and simple. So you can't split out internet across instruction either? No. Oh, okay. The only thing that we will do is the non-school based um, phones is sitting, you'll see later, in operations. Okay. But this is for the, for the schoolhouse. 
commencement expenses. There's your graduation expenses. You can so see it's pretty. The, I, I apologize. No. What about this building? That would be in the operation. Yeah, I understand that, but I didn't. I didn't see. I mean, I'll go back and look. All right. We haven't gotten yeah, we operations, got yet. Into operations yet. Gotcha. That's that's oh, so this building page thirtieth. Operations instead of. There's two places to charge phone bills. Mid level for everything that the schoolhouse and everything and else goes to operations. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Yep. And again, this, these, are, this, these are not my decisions. These are, uh, no, you no, know, no. from, no, from, no, I get it. I'm just wondering. Where... MSDE tells us where we have to report those things. Um, again, commencement expenses, you can see we're pretty consistent there um, with the expenditures for graduation. One thing with commencement expenses, which is a little out of the ballpark here, we need to make a decision on where we're having commencement. Well, I know, but that's not what we're talking about. I know, about. but if it's going to be expensive, to, okay, if it's going to cost us to do something to the field or have it outside, or if we're have it not have it outside, that's going to be an expense. Right. Mr. Pender is getting some okay. data for us. We had a high school committee uh, meeting yesterday, and he and everybody knows where we are. So it's publicly, we're True. gathering data. Then we'll come back and we'll meet with high school principals, make some decisions. Yeah, because that could be, an, I mean, not a, it could be an expense if we did keep it in the stadium mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. And yeah. given the temperature and the fact that schools are moving to black graduation gowns, it's going to be really hot. <laughs> and I think the earlier we tell them, the better off we are. And that's our thinking. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and again, if, as we go through this, um, mileage and travel, it's the same description for every one of these categories. You know, if you, if you need me to go through that or you have a question about it or write it down. But it's, this is basically the, the in-county and out-of-county travel. Uh, for the people that are charged to this particular <coughs> category. The same thing with subscriptions and dues, calls for professional publications and memberships. So you'll see that same nomenclature, hopefully the same description throughout each of these each of these categories. With subscriptions and dues, again, based on our what we're seeing, that five-year trend, we feel that there can be a $4,000 reduction there, bringing it down to $7,500 budget in FY21 as opposed to the current $11,500. Meetings and conferences, again, statewide, um, national, local conferences, um, haven't been doing much according to what this looks like. So again, we're taking that $6,000 budget and we're moving it down to $4,000, $2,000 reduction. So in total of other charges here, there's $11,000 reduction, but then that bottom line on page 11 as a category, we're seeing a $2,000 request. Exclusive of salaries. Moving over to page 12, again, this is your instructional category, or categories, and again, your summary, breaking it out, and then bottom line, there's a $105,000 request here, the $100,000 in salary wages, we'll see that, that's going to be another increase in subs, because we have a mandatory increase coming again in Jan not only January of this year, or January of 20, January of 21, which is what this budget's going to cover, of another raise to the minimum wage. So you're going to see an increase here for the next four years, because I think it goes through mm -hmm. 23, I think it does, to, to eventually get it up to $15, 15 an hour. So you're going to see a request here every year. You know, we certainly don't want to front load it and get, well, it'd be nice if we had all the money and we could do something else with it, but you're going to see this as a minimal increase to get the minimum wage paid for <laughs> all the employees that are affected by that. Uh, every year. Is the minimum wage going up to next year? $11 on January 1. <coughs> and we currently have some people making minimum now at 10.10. 10. 10, so they're going to get a 90 cents an hour increase. Do our subs get a flat fee per day or they vary on what qualifications they have? Correct. Both. The flat fee flat based fee on their based qualifications. On <laughs> Not today, but at some time. The answer I always got was sometimes the superintendent requests people, to, teachers, to be out of the classroom, so we have to put a substitute in because they have in service, or yeah. they're yeah. training or something. Correct. Then we have some people that are sick, some are maternity leave. And we get some kind of breakdown because I got blown out about 20 years ago when I saw 17% of our teachers were out with substitutes. Oh, now, we that do. Was a yeah. Very, that, was, yeah. That, was, that, was, that was a very distorted number because <laughs> some of them were because they had to be out for certain reasons. Yeah. But if you're in a manufacturing or a regular business, if 17% yeah. of your employees were out of the workforce, yeah. you'd be yeah. in trouble. We keep um, attendance, monthly attendance for teachers, okay. so we can share that with you. But <laughs> but what you'll see is for different reasons, so okay. you'll see sick. And we can also share with you uh, what the current salary is 
uh, for substitutes. So if you have a high school degree or AA degree or four year degree or whatever, it's different rates of pay. But, but it is that. hourly. I worry more about it. Lose the teacher out of the classroom. Yeah, we do too. To be. We don't do a, we don't do uh, a lot of pull out of the classroom for professional development. Yeah, this, this is twenty pull? years ago. Yeah, the it's, I got yeah, it. it's, it's just I don't, I don't need numbers for percentages. Yeah. It's just I hate to see yeah. when my granddaughter or daughter comes home and says the teacher's out for three days. Yeah. Well, you know, we don't, that's a we don't whole do any of that. Issue. <laughs> we, the other thing that is probably not captured is the substitutes that come in for the during the day IEP meetings because they the teachers don't go check out and check in there so the teacher is attends the IEP meetings and there has to be a sub when they understand there. I mean there's all kinds of reasons for it just when the teachers out of I'm just saying it's not going to be recorded anywhere but they, but it's, it, it, it reflects how much we're spending the substitutes mm -hmm. it will substitutes, be substitute. when substitutes are in the in the paying them they're in the classroom that means the teacher's not there we have a category for subs okay. that you'll see that we that was one of the categories that we needed to increase. We needed to write that. Mm -hmm. Are your nurses in that category or is that ancillary stuff? That's different. Yeah. You'll see that in health services where the nurses are charged. <coughs> yep. um, Page number? 13. Mm -hmm. Again, just the full-time staff. And again, there's a, we just finished the discussion, uh, good timing there. Uh, FY20, we did increase that by hundred thousand dollars and in FY 21 you can see we're requesting another hundred thousand dollars to address the teacher shortfall because the 571 is what we spent in 19 against so this year we have a six hundred thousand dollar budget so we're pretty we're on par once you hit that minimum wage and if you have somebody <coughs> at 1050 and somebody at 11 now you have to move the 1050 to 11 you're not going to leave the 11 at 11 most likely you're going to move them up somewhere also. And our, and our teachers at thirty-six million. That does that. That's not counting the contract. No, these are the full that's, time. These are just the, the teachers we have not requested any additional ones or correct. That's what that's what our current budget is. And again, this will increase based on what the negotiated agreement is. We already know that. The chairman is numbers. I'm working on that number. Yes, mm -hmm. but we already know what the. We don't know the dollar amount yet, but we know what the what the. Um, Commitment is, well, three which is a step in one and a half percent. Yeah, three percent on this one's a million dollars, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and that varies based on where the the, the dem that's the demographics of where the people are on what scale and on what step. I'm just using but generally, three general percent. Yep. yep. Um, again, page fourteen. These are basically your temporary instructional positions: summer school, home, hospital. Um, your clubs, your athletics, um, it's probably an area that could use some additional attention as well. But again, first blush, we left that alone. And then staff development activities. This is our, our regular training stipends and our school improvement team stipends. Um, and you can see the budget that we have there is pretty well in line with what our historical expenditures there. So there's no increase at this point requested for FY21. So total salaries and wages is reflecting an increase of $100,000. The substitutes that we talked about your home hospital instruction have you seen that study or is it increased or decreased from last year are you talking about the number of teachers there are the number that are actually being utilized we we can't get enough we have a lot of needs in this area and the, this is one of the things that we've been talking about for the past couple of years the rate of pay um, and all of them are not certificated teachers because they don't have to be um, but the rate of pay is low it had not increased in a I don't know 15 20 years and we have you seen an increase in the request for in the this? need oh. we're just starting this year and actually <coughs> I got a folder today and I haven't gone through it but we've got a stack in there so we I, I'm not anticipating that it's going to be any less and when we don't have enough we do use substitutes for that as well well they aren't considered substitutes but they are not they may not be a certificated teacher are they um, benefited employees mm, yeah. not your home no. hospital no. 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 I don't know if we have any regular teach regular classroom teachers so that are doing that, we, that outside. I don't know. We, about. I, be, I believe we do. We may have a, a couple, yeah, of teachers that can do it. It depends on what the children's needs are. So when we say home hospital teacher, we're not talking about a teacher who is at a child's house every day, you know, from 9 to 2.30 or 3 or, or whatever. <laughs> there are established number of hours that will um, meet 
the requirements of each child depends on what their needs are and sometimes what they can tolerate. It just depends on why the child is out of school. If a child is out because they're chronically ill, they may not be able to tolerate instruction for four hours every day or every three days or right. maybe it's four hours a week. You know, it just depends on what the needs of the child is, are. So are we, we going to expect to be in an overage in this category for this, this budget year? Well, let's see what's our trend. I don't... Oh, I don't have that broken out like it, that. We can look at the it, trend. It'll be close, and again, this is one of those <coughs> going to be that effect of that minimum wage creeping up, right. and pretty soon you're going to have this person here, and even though they're above minimum wage, you know, the, the, um, the differential between the different steps and grades. So, yeah, it could be impacted, but right now we're trending pretty close to what our budget is. Okay. Explain the box in that FY20. What is that? Um, would you go over that box? Says, on um, what page? 14? Page 14, yeah. The FY13766. So as we put money in the budget to try to increase um, some of our temporary help salary-wise, that's what this reflected here. This was th The reason it's probably an odd number is because of where it laid. I think we added 100 and... 100. 150. Sorry. I have it on the sheet. I think we added $100,000, $100, and I broke it up amongst substitutes and this particular category so that was just probably based on a percentage is how we came up with the 13,766 but that's to, again to increase the home hospital needs okay either the rate of pay and or the number that we have uh, available to us on 15 there's your consultants and as I explained earlier so here here's a, here's a double whammy on the box so in FY 20 this board approved $30,000 to actually fund the Equal Opportunity Schools contract. So that's the note that says FY20, um, how we got to $48,000. But in there was also $15,000 for the DataWise consultant. It's not appropriately charged there that we've moved that. So that's why you have two notes there. So it's a $30,000 increase that we did in the current year, um, and then the $15,000, which we're <coughs> going to transfer in FY21 to make that all balance. Like the fifteen thousand dollars is not a decrease; it's just a transfer. Just a transfer. Yep, yep, yep. And that's why I use the word "transferred" in the little description of the box, so we get an idea. Um, athletic trainers, sixty thousand dollars here. Um, it's it's on par. Mr. Uh, Pender's in, anticipating that we'll have a little bit extra, not over budget, but we'll. Um, those rates are continuing to increase on in what the athletic trainers are, so there's no reduction available there. And then software licenses, there's a description of all the things we do with these license agreements. Uh, Apex, Discovery, the STAR 360 that this board just approved a few weeks ago, Agile Minds, uh, our math, Alexandria is our library, Pebble Go, Naviance, and other uh, digital databases. Would you um, mind um, breaking that down? Sure. Sending it to us? Sure. The other question I'd have on that one, in 16, we're 80. Then we're 104, 402,000. Then we're 145. Then we're 317. Seems like we're like on a roller coaster. Yeah, so I'll have to I, research. I, I just research. You know, I, I will but, research it. Some of it could be um, that if we, to get competitive pricing, we may have to pay two years at one time. It could be something along those lines. But I'll definitely research the, the if, why if, the if variance is. Yeah, if we're doing that, then there's a little <coughs> footnote to say that, you know, at the year we were at 402, we go from 402 down to 145. Yep. We're really at two or 300 every year. Gotcha. There was something that year. Star 360. We reduced Star 360. If you remember a couple mm -hmm. years ago, we cut it out of the budget. So I know at least $100,000. And then we put it back in. Back. We, had, we didn't have it for a year, and we were able right. with Kerwin funding to bring it back. And 2017. That would be one piece of the writ. Because I remember it. It might be more stable than it looks, but to me it looks like it's a. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was something else too that 2016 we decided not to use it again. Page 16, um, textbooks as you. Uh, I'm when, when you do write these answers to these questions, and could you put the page number? Sure, it would be helpful. For sure, us to, or if you're giving if me questions right or or but through, I'm absolutely. Page, I'm, give me the page number. Right is, is I'm just saying yeah. when you write the explanation. Well, dues and subscriptions, you're going to see it 25 times in here. So yes. yeah, that page number would be helpful. Both, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thanks. Um, textbooks, as you know, we purchase uh, all of our textbooks through the capital program. We'll 
save that discussion for some other point as to whether that's appropriate or not. Mm -hmm. But if a school might need to buy an actual textbook for a, to finish out a class set or something like that, there's some very small charges that are that are here, um, and that's what that represents. Um, again, MOI. This is basically the school-based materials of instruction. Uh, we did increase this budget this current year to handle, as this board approved, the $100 reimbursement for teacher supplies to get away from the actual reimbursement. We're actually going to be paying them a, a, um, an upfront $100 per teacher. So that's what's represented here, along with all the school-based MOI. Um, does not include media. That's the line below it. Um, but that's basically everything the school needs in the classroom. Does each school... Not part of the contract. Doctor, does each school get the same amount of money, like each principal's for materials, or is that adjusted depending on this, not the school, but the level or something? Yeah, they don't all get the same dollar amount. Because, I mean, you know, I, I hear, you know, PTA is telling me we have to have fundraisers because we don't have enough, and I, I go lightly. Mm -hmm. But yeah. my understanding is we fund what's adequately needed. Now, if there's extras or, I don't say frill stuff, but nice things or something a little above then that's great for PTAs to do exactly. that and, and work with the teachers. Exactly. But as far as what's needed in the classroom, we adequately fund what the teachers need for instructional purposes. Correctly, based on our curriculum. Okay. Mm -hmm. gotcha. And I would think this is a line that's going to change once the schools give us their it will their needs. Their, the the request likely will. Um, and Mr. P oh, yeah. is laughing. <laughs> um, and this this yeah. group, you'll yeah, see. Yeah, we know what they request. <laughs> And it's but you modify yes. that amount. What we do is we we meet with the administrators, we get their requests, we prioritize based on our our uh, strategic plan and and where we want to go district wide, and then we come to you after we have gone through. We're not going to come to you with a request that we know is absorbent and this board is not going to be able to entertain. So we narrow the list for schools first, and then we bring that to you, and then you narrow it further. So just to add, the superintendent's budget last year, the board had cut $123,000 in MOI and $141,000 in school-based materials. I mean, I, you know, it's like anything. It's needs and wants. Exactly. I mean, there's probably wants for everything and, and are justified in some certain fields that what you can actually, you know, you gotta, well, we only have so many dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we can afford. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say year after year after year, when all we get was MO, MOE, that's right where we chop that particular. So there comes a year where they're like, 2014, okay, 2014, we are down to yeah. absolute. You know, and the reason period. why is because that's one of the biggest categories. That's one of the ones that you the do that you have a little yeah. Yeah, bit of control over. But, but one of our biggest categories is, is and salaries and wages are. Well, that's we, we can do with that. We can do with that. Money. Right. Right. Not all of it, but, you know, when we start talking about these numbers, yeah, you know, I mean, we're looking at we're talking money coming 50, 15 percent of one hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars mm -hmm. is what we have a little bit of control over. And within that, this happens yeah. to be a category that you can say yes or no, yes or no. Yeah. But there's only so many years, what I would think, that you can keep saying no when yep. schools are saying we need to replace yes. whiteboards, we need to replace. Yes. Eventually, we're going to have to yes. no, but we also ask have, for the money. We have, we have salaries. We have uh, health insurance going up. We have a lot of other things that... Everybody wants, which yep. we pay what, 80%, 85%? 85% of salaries and benefits. No, I mean of health insurance. Like we pay 85%. About 20% of the um, the salary amount is budget. I mean, is benefits. Uh -huh. Wouldn't you say about 15, 20%? Mm -hmm. so some, you know, 50,000 is 10 and. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the, again, you, to your point, yeah, the costs continue to increase, but, you know, so did the supplies in the classroom, too. So I understand. Yeah. But I mean, like, I mean, yeah. what's health care goes up? You know, what percentage do we pay of health care for our employees? Well, it depends. Some, we have a contingency, about 200 and some th folks that we don't pay. They don't pay any. We pay all of it. Um, mm hmm uh huh. We yeah. We'll we'll end up talking about that again. Yes. Um, and no, then the thing, it's good to some do is that. ninety percent they pay ten us. Some twenty percent us. It depends on which plan they have. Mm -hmm. That's the plan they've adopted. Oh, I mean it's just awful hard when somebody's not paying. You know, it sounds like a little bit to them, but when it's eighty percent to us, it, it's a it's a number. You know, and it has to happen. Understand, but it's 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 a big number that. Yeah. You know. 
Yep, we'll get to all of those. Okay. Um, media Center Supplies, again, uh, books and uh, audio for the Media Center. Um, and as we talked about, both of those numbers will fluctuate um, based on enrollment at the school um, because it is done on a per-pupil basis. Um, so the more kids you have, to technically, the more MOI you would get. No um, number yet. Number 30 is number. No, that hasn't come at, back yet. Um, staff development supplies, very small amount there um, for um, some of the um, uh, professional development activities that we have uh, in the schools. And again, license agreements. And um, I probably did a little bit better job, um, Ms. Harper, on breaking this particular one out. Um, but if you want to see the dollar amounts associated with those, I can get those as well. But this is our power school, our in internet content yeah, filtering, Thank you. make, and so on and so forth. She did that. She wants to. Mm -hmm. Just if they're on a year contract or two years or what, okay. whatever that is. Okay. Most of this is probably going to be on a year by year, but I'll get that for okay. you too. Thank you. Yep. Page 17, again, mileage and travel, we've talked about that, meetings and conferences. Uh, teacher of the Year, we do budget a little bit. Uh, teacher of the Year, just for some reimbursables for the Teacher of the Year, their out-of-pocket expenses, um, and the, the insurance for the vehicle that they were they were given by Hertrich, you know, um, be unfair to you know, get a new vehicle and then be asked to pay money for the insurance to go along with it, so the, mm -hmm. the board supports that. Um, dual enrollment early college tuition, that um, has increased recently, but we feel that's going to be stabilizing. As you can see, uh, the last two years we were in the in the ballpark of the budgeted amount. But again, this is the money we pay both <laughs> Chesapeake and um, Anne Arundel County. What about, oh. does any of our kids go to Washington? I don't believe through the dual enrollment Not process. Dual enrollment. Not dual enrollment. I would think that would be going up, though, because one of our initiatives is to start increasing the number of the kids. And that's that why it's dual yeah. enrollment. I mean, there's still some, mm -hmm. there's still some, uh, a little bit of area there to move. From you know twenty four, twenty five thousand to thirty thousand. Yeah. But, but, if, but if a student, it's not a budgetary problem right now. Mm -hmm. If a student, we have money. To, if somebody wants to do doodle enrollment, we have the money there to do it. It is there. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Extracurricular activities. This is you know for your band and athletics, one hundred twenty three thousand dollars there. And subscriptions and dues, um, no budget there. A small expenditure. So Last if we're going to cut seven thousand out of that from uh, actual nineteen uh, twenty nineteen, so so again we're not. What is it going to be? <laughs> so, so we're not. So just a, a point of emphasis. So we're not cutting. So last year we did spend one hundred and thirty against one hundred and twenty three thousand dollars, but the budget even last year was one hundred and twenty three. Okay. So if you look at okay. those two columns, you see that they're the same one hundred twenty three. Okay. So that tells you currently we're one hundred and twenty three. Um, and if there was not a note, like I had mentioned, we didn't increase this budget going into 20. Okay, so from 19 to 20, it still stayed. It was still 123. Came into play there or something. Sorry, we, maybe the band uniforms that we funded came into there, and that's why that was up. That no, year. this this is really the the, the, the yeah. athletic the cost of running the athletic program, and then um, the so band. So how does it go down from 130 to 123 over the course of the year? What did we take out? Okay, so again, two different two different things going on. We spent 130, but we only had 123,000 to spend, so we didn't so we change overspent. the budget. So we overspent this okay. budget. So, so our not, budget was 123. We yes. actually went to 130, and actually okay. went to 130. So hopefully, we can cost contain you know with the athletic directors and band and and be 123. But some things have to happen. Okay. Um, I would hate to see that we are taking that. We are not taking okay. they overspent, but no. we gotcha. will but we monitor can certainly add gotcha. seven thousand dollars to this account to bring it in and line there's with the hundred and thirty we spent. We do overspend categories. I understand that. No. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure yep. we're not taking away from that particular And a perfect example to that might be uh, we didn't spend all the dual enrollment for that particular year. So that offset the athletic mm -hmm. overage. I get that. There were a few extracurricular activities I can remember back in 2015-2016 that we paid for. There was a couple clubs, a couple things that needed increase to be done. Increase in clubs. Yeah, it was an increase in clubs. Increase so in types of clubs. You know, like the ice hockey and a few other. Th I mean, so there's there's data to you know support all this. Okay. Page 18, um, equipment. Um, because we've had to replace equipment, um, because 
we still have equipment that's what 50 60 years old in some of our schools and as it fails we have to um, we've asked as mr. Pender can probably attest to we've asked multiple years for capital funding for furniture and there is no funding in the operating budget so that's that twenty thousand dollar request to at least start to pick away at some of our needs with that and it could probably be ten times that amount of money to address Hundred years? What, what, what did you say? We have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, no, maybe some of me can I can celebrate. You know, <laughs> plastic hand I mean, A lot of our cafeteria tables, That's our original right. tables yeah. that were in there, went even before the buildings were renovated. Um, cafeteria tables are running, you know, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars a piece to replace. Um, we have, you know, some custodians getting injured because of trying to close them and open them up, but. Um, some of the chairs at Queen Anne's County High School in that cafeteria are, um, you 1950. know. 1950. They're yes. cracked, they're broken. Yep. Yeah. They're not from Queen Anne's County High School in 1950. So we, we try to weld whatever we can. We try to fix in-house. But what we've done in the past, we've able to use, if we renovated a school and it got new furniture, like say Stevensville Middle School, we would divide that furniture up to schools that need it. Now we're at the point where we haven't done any school. Yeah, and everything is depleted in the warehouse to just bare bones. We try to keep about four classrooms um, of desks and chairs in there just in case we have to add, you know, something, a module or create a new classroom. But other than that, the cafeteria tables, those types of things, they're gone. <coughs> it's, it's a severe need. <laughs> I know it's in the hot, in the middle school, in those. My son, for example, got big, and the chairs in the middle school were too small, and he could not sit in them. He had to stand up in the classroom. And I said, we don't have money for furniture. <laughs> I told him, so we have it, and we don't, and schools don't ask for it, I don't think, knowing that it doesn't exist. So that's kind of a, not good that we do that, but um, I, that also is another spot we take money away if, when we have consistent years of only MOI, MOU, MOE, I'm sorry. That's correct. And we did ask the schools uh, this year through the, the budget documents that we sent out there to tell us what their capital needs are, both furniture and technology. So maybe we'll get a better idea this year of how many cafeteria tables really need to be fixed or repaired or, or thrown out. Mm -hmm. And the schools are, and are really good about really trying to do the best they can yes that's right miss bass but but when the need is there the need is there so you know when we've mm -hmm. fixed a cafeteria table 12 times and there's no more fixing to be done it's we just need to buy one the ones at the high school are the ones that used to fold up into the wall aren't they aren't they those still those two no no, no. Those are um yeah, churchill is having some severe issues canard elementary school um and it's not here, but when Churchill was renovated, wasn't there money put in for furniture and stuff then? I mean, it might not be your, you might not, you weren't there then, but. And so I'm going to say, in some of those, I wasn't here then, but in some of those, no. Some Most of them. everyone I can remember, whenever a school was renovated or new, and after we paid, not, it was 50 50 at the best. The cap did stay and only pay so much. And then when they had another capital bill come in, for well, any furniture. any type of furniture would be oh, certainly on the county. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I know I've always thought the county always. I'm not saying didn't pay enough, but paid something for some of this stuff. The schools that I can remember, like you know, Sudlersville, yeah. Stevensville, um, you know, Kennard, in the new section at Kennard, yes. But from what I'm kind of discovering, the kind of your common areas, no, uh, not all the time. It wasn't, you know. And you got to remember, you got, you go to the high school, you got 1,200 kids sitting at a lunch table every day. I mean, and that's 180 days a year with all the food. And I mean, it's it's a lot of wear and tear on the businesses. Um, not businesses, I'm sorry, a lot of wear and tear on the tables and the furniture and doors and all. So, but some of it was yes, but not not all of it. So when we redid, when we did add the extra side to Graysonville, and we increase the kitchen space we didn't do anything as far as the tables in no, that kitchen no. so those those were old mm. how many years ago when we looked at that project yep okay so we're like i said we've the maintenance department has pretty much fixed everything we can fix and then i mean it's just to the point now where there's there's no turning back with fixing it it's just done um you know and you also have to look at with the new ada features when you're looking at those kinds of things what was ADA compliant 50 years ago is no longer 
you know, ADA compliant. So you have to take that consideration also. Mr. Bender, is there any yes, way to get a budget on what is nest what's needed right now? Mm -hmm. Any way to get? Yeah. I mean, in my mind, it would be nice to get a cycle going through. Right. You know, so that we got just like we're doing with the buildings and we did the uh, assessment. Yeah, facilities assessment. Just get a cycle going on with the furniture going, okay, this is the allotment we want to do. This school, we're going to have boom, 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 chairs or tables, you know, fixed or replaced um, and, and kind of moving that route. But we can get, yeah, that's not a problem. That would be, that would, that would be helpful. I just get nervous because, yes, we do get some capital. But then that's not always there. No. You know, it could be just no. yanked. Why is that then not under capital and they're sitting in this? Maybe I got lost on So, So sometimes, like, if we know that, hey, all of the tables need to be replaced and it's going to be like a one-time purchase, I mean, with capital, yeah, that, that works out fine. But there is no line item. So when Kenora calls me and says, hey, Mr. Penner, we got three tables that are totally done and we've done everything we can to, can to them, I have nowhere to purchase that. Okay. Um, it just, you know, there's no account for it at all. That would be something to know at each school what is what's needed. I mean, that's, that's what Mr. We, can, we, can yeah. we did. That. We yeah. put that on the um, that, that teachers. I mean, principals that. have that on their request, their budget request, so they can add that. And what replacement costs would possibly be? <laughs> so that's technically where your twenty twenty thousand increase. Yeah, it's just a it's a just a, a, okay. a seed money, you know, on some of this, and if we can get it funded. Um, and then the we continue, you know, whether we, whether we grow <laughs> right. it or whatever. But as we mentioned, you know, uh, eight, let me do my math. Eight cafeteria tables eats this up. Eight right. cafeteria exactly. tables. Yep. Um, tuition out-of-county placements, these are the dollars uh, for what our expense would be for children that reside in our county but have to be educated in another county. Um, and again, this is just a year to year, as you can see, a couple years up, a couple years down. This is a year to year ongoing. Who knows where these children are going to be? So, um, not recommending any adjustment to that account. And this is not special ed. This is just. This is our um, foster placements, or child can't reside in the home, but the the parents might be here, but they're living with grandma down in Talbot County, uh, for whatever reason. Um, normally it's a social service or other kind of placement. We have to pay Talbot County because they are going to a Talbot County school because they're living with grandma. But since the residency is here in Queen Anne's County, we have to foot the bill. Is that, is that reciprocal? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Is that offset? We have a place somewhere in here where we have a we have we, Yes. In, on the revenue side, we have money that comes in from other counties. So it's not a, it, it's depending on the year, it could very well be a net zero. Um, last year, I think we, we made out the good by ten or fifteen thousand dollars that we brought in more than no, we it's spent. A, it's a, yeah, we send some, they send some, so it's pretty much a not a net zero every year, but over the course of time, it's yeah. It's uh, again, it cost. depends on yep the year. Mm -hmm. it's just kind of like non-public placements when we get to special ed. Mm -hmm. One year might be good, and one year we have a few more. Um, so that finishes instruction, and again, that total increase there is one hundred and five, as shown on the bottom right of page eighteen. I just wanted to do a time check. Are we okay? It's, to keep moving or want to summarize at some point or we just how much should we give it to 630 so keep going run until 630 okay all right we'll do um, special ed same thing the summary 198,921 and we can almost talk to the summary page from here because the increase there is the two things that we talked about um, last time but we'll go through it page by page that's the increase for the special ed consortium that kind of caught us by surprise this year and then the uh, a modest little increase uh, for um, non-public placements but again page 20 is your um, positions substitutes here uh, we do charge if we know that a substitute is in for a special education teacher we will charge it to special education um, and that's what's reflected here with that hundred and twenty thousand dollar budget and you can see we've done fairly well uh, with that but that just goes and offsets other things in within this particular category and then um, uh, ESY is charged here as well or any home and hospital instruction related to a special needs child would be charged here as well here's your consultants and contract therapists so again uh, we've varied anywhere between 183 to 341,000 not only depending on the um, 
whether we can get the employees, but also the services needed for the children that we serve. So again, here's a $200,000 budget. We could certainly increase this to a little bit more. We decided to hold it still until we can get a little bit further in the budget cycle, see if we can hire some of these people that we have um, out there as vacant positions to offset this need. But I would imagine that the needs, even if we were fully staffed, would still have to require some contracted services here. Software license and training, again, uh, trying to get pretty prescriptive here with the psychological testing, the goal book. I think um, we got a pretty good explanation when um, Ms. Smith explained that during the contract approval for goal book. If you remember ENOME, ENOME, goal book, um, that's where this is charged, uh, and uh, a read and write extension for Google Chrome. And legal services here, again, when they're special ed legal services, we do charge them here. So uh, not all legal services is what you saw earlier. That was you know, basically the regular ed or your board legal services. Here's where the costs are for special ed. Again, last couple of years we've done very well, but again, the, the savings here just offsets you know, one or two other areas that um, we're not so fortunate to be coming in under budget. Materials of instruction. Um, this again is an area that could probably see an increase. Um, again, first blush, we didn't add anything here, but you can see the historical trend. Uh, it's quite large. Um, the last couple of years have been a few thousand dollars over. Um, and again, this funds um, even spe some specialized equipment that may need uh, based on the needs of the child. So you, that, that could be the 15, 16, why that was so large. There may have been some um, specialized needs for the children that we were servicing at that point um, required us to purchase a particular thing. I remember recently, I think I saw some kind of a, a specialized chair or something that needed to be purchased. So this certainly could probably be increased, um, but again, we're holding it at you know a $60,000 budget here, and we can work with Ms. Smith throughout the budget process to get an idea of what's really needed. The other thing that we're looking at when it comes to this is what the special ed a lot of this money is allocated to the schools, and they use it for the needs of the children in their schools. Um, but we're doing an analysis to make sure that uh, we're not duplicating efforts where, you know, like systemic things, maybe Ms. Smith should be purchasing them and take that off the hands of the schools um, so we can better get an understanding of what the schools are purchasing with their special ed dollars versus what uh, Ms. Smith is doing centrally. Uh, so we are looking at that. And some of the funding she has, though, is some some grant funding too, right? She has a lot of grant funding. She has a lot of grant funding. And again, those are supplemental this. things, not supplanting. So we can't cut this. But there are materials and instruction that she purchases through the grant funds. Some of the consultants, as you approved a few weeks ago, they are funded through grant funds. So yeah, there are a lot of supportive services. Um, but you don't have them included in here? No, this is just your this is just your unrestricted operating budget. This is not your grant budgets. Okay, so there wouldn't should be any increases. Um, yeah, but there can be. Mm -hmm. When they're restricted, we can't touch them. When it's unrestricted, there would be some increases. So again, with the federal supplanting law, if we've always paid for it out of local funds, and we get a grant, we can't. If it's a federal grant, we cannot take that federal funding and say, oh, you know, I'll pu I'll purchase it out of the grant now. That would be a supplanting issue, and we'd go to federal that, jail for I'm that. I'm just one. saying what we request in our budget then if we see she's getting grants and it's something we need and she can pay with, it with a grant, you just told it doesn't show up. It well, she hasn't guessed what she needs yet. She hasn't decided. They decide the budget based on, I guess, what comes first, the grant or the budget? I mean... This budget would come first because a grant is only supposed to be supplemental on top of that. So I understand. I'm just saying, logically, if she needs something, she all of a sudden she thinks she needs something. And she gets a grant, and she says, oh, that's something I can take out of the grant, because I haven't put it a budget request in yet. She, she could if, if we never purchased that item or a like item. So give you an example. If, uh, 
a laptop computer, uh, you know, and she bought that for every school, but now we have a special ed child at this particular school, and we bought all these other ones with local funds. She'd have to purchase that with local funds, even though it's brand new because we've done it, the rest of it. So that would be an increase to her local budget, even though she got a grant that could very well support materials, instructions, and laptops, but the fact that that particular device was purchased with local funds in the year prior, even at a different school, then our local funds would have to support that. Okay, so there's a lot of, it depends. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when she requests that grant, she's about got to be very specific about what she's going to do with that money. Yes. Correct. And it yes. cannot her spending is overlap driven by the grant. something that's already going to be supplied. You Correct. can't double dip. Correct. I understand in, in that. In that theory, when we do our budget, are we better off lower in some places, hopefully getting a grant and then have to change. Mm -hmm. No, you can't do that. That yeah, would be supplanting. That. And, and a lot of these grants are for one year. So if you yeah. did that, I mean, you have your federal come up short next yeah. year. You have your federal IDEA, uh, Individual Disabilities Education Act. That's pretty much a standard every year. We will get that title one. <coughs> we will pretty much get that. We will, we will get that every year. The the dollars change based on the um, the needs of the students and and what our demographics are. But you certainly couldn't cut this budget hoping that a grant is going to come in and save the day. The grant is, in most yeah, grants, it's, it's a pilot program for a lot of things where they're going to come in, try something new, and then the, the operating budget is expected to pick that up after two or three years. But right. we would, you know, we'd be in federal jail if we cut this budget and relied on grants to um, fund that. Um, and that's a good point, what you just mentioned, that after the grant has expired, we often are expected, especially with a position, to be able to now fund that on our own because we've given the grant time to accustomize ourselves to having that in our budget in the future mm -hmm. if it was a really critical need, be it an employee position or materials. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So in this budget, this, does the state mandate that you don't separate equipment from instructional materials? Because I would consider Riften chairs and standards equipment rather than... That would than be. So, so the, um, the new standard um, is $5,000. So if a per item piece is $5,000 or more, then it would go into equipment. Okay. If it was $5,000 or less, it could be coded as materials of instruction. Years ago with the federal grants, that was only $1,000. Oh. But now the new limit is $5,000, and that's what we're holding to is the $5,000 limit. Okay. Now, we may still inventory it. You know, we want to tag on it because mm -hmm. it's an expensive piece. You know, it's $2,500. We, we want to make sure it's not lost. So we'll still inventory it. But as far as maybe how it's shown here, it would be the difference of $5,000. And again, that's per item. If it's, you know, if the chair is $2,500 and we buy two of them or three of them, it's still not going to show an equipment. The per item price would have to be $5,000 for it to show here. Um, page 23, subscription dues, we've talked about that. There's no budget there. Uh, meetings and conferences, the same thing here. And to um, Captain Kelly's point, that's probably where you're seeing some of your professional development, your meetings and conferences is coming out of the grant funds. Uh, so you are not seeing local funds expended for that. And then again, mileage and travel, this is again for the staff that have to do all the traveling uh, in and out of county, uh, the reimbursement for that. So why would we have had subscriptions and dues of 5700 in 2018, but typically no other year? I will research that and find out. Thanks. Okay, page 24, equipment. Again, here's the assistive technology, and you can see it fluctuates, and I, again, may vary on the actual needs of that particular. You can see it's a little bit higher in 15 and 16. Um, we didn't spend anything last year, uh, and we only have a $5,000 budget anyway, and that's that $5,000 threshold. So this basically affords us to buy one piece of equipment. And then again, the two biggies down here are our non-public placements and our special ed consortium. As you can see, um, if you start and then with the non-publics, <coughs> 299, 225, 293, but then we jump up to 472, 552, and our current budget right now is only 485. So that's where that request of 70,000 comes in to get it at least in line with what we spent in 19. But by the time we get to 21, you know, we may have less kids. We could have more. 
And, and I know we just picked up a few. I'm sorry. One or two could eat out of the heart. Well, we've already really eaten it up because, yeah. When you say $70,000, that's. Oh, yes. That's probably one. That's one placement. Yeah, one placement. Um, the big one that's that's we are researching is the use of the special ed consortium. As you can see, uh, it started off at 281, um, and it's now uh, we're estimating 442,000 because we only have a 313,000 dollar budget. But remember, we talked about we're 112,000 dollars short, so that gets us to 425, and then I throw another four percent escalator in there just for whatever. So that's 128,000 dollar increase over the current budget for special ed consortium. So. That's what your total is of 198921 in special ed. Are those the same, this consortium is the same members that the ESMEC is? Or? No, this is this is the Midshore Special Ed Consortium that's been in place probably before ESMEC was in place because I think they've been sharing services for yes. quite some time. Okay. We're going to do an analogy of the services we're receiving for the cost we're paying to find out if it's cost effective for yes, our sir. system. Yes, sir. And in this, we're accounting for these folks attending school until they're 21. So we could be play, paying these out of for another two. Talking about the non-public placements? Yes, ma'am. Depending on where they are. Mm -hmm. Depending on where they are and what county they live in. You know, because it's are. the county you live in depends on whether we pick this up or somebody else. Okay. That brings us to 629 and we finished yes okay, uh, cool. special ed yeah thank you good I'll stop it special ed. okay all right thank you this just is just fyi easy. was this document helpful yes mm -hmm. okay <coughs> the right. biggest thing i'm going to see is as when we go future in there like somebody said earlier page number so when we keep notes we'll know what we're writing on yep because when you I'll tell me something that i've been through it i can be half an hour yeah 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 i right. will i will create a google doc where we'll track all of these um <clears throat> Uh, questions and the answers well, you know give us a few days and we'll get the answers back to you but it won't be weeks before we get answers to you but a few, day or two and, and then we'll have our other figures as far as our contractual uh, <coughs> <two> -year budget. <coughs> yeah so, I'll have them three I will probably first discuss those with you at a, at a negotiation close session okay. and then we'll and then we'll bring them out for our discussion here and when will we know our September 30th numbers the state we have some state and the state gets back to us on that yeah. yeah. Not until November. Yeah. November. Clear, yeah, the November. beginning of November. I guess it's a budgetary mm -hmm. item still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we'll we'll use some of the preliminary numbers to do some estimating on. All right. Yeah, because I mean, we only have 14 schools. So. Well, they do everybody. Yep. Yeah. They don't put a dozen. They, I'm just looking at you. I know. They give me a, a, right. We can time. make some good estimates. We know that. Well, we know what our numbers oh, are, then we can know. Yeah. So the only the only budget <laughs> wrap up I wanted to do was um, we've also in the past have asked for board priorities. So if you can come together and get me what your board priorities are, we can certainly incorporate that in our discussions going forward. And then um, we are in the midst of we have a draft of the budget survey, so that should be going out shortly, like we did last year. So I just want to give you an update on that. Um, but um, Where did, who's that go to? Everybody. Well, it's it's it's, an, it's out available on our website. So it's broken up into three areas where um, if you're a parent, and you can go in multiple times, if you're a teacher and a parent, respond as a parent, respond as a teacher, respond as a community member. And that's publicly out there so people know. Yeah, I think last year um, we put it on Twitter. We had it on Facebook. It's on our, you would access it from our website. I just want, you know, because when we have budget hearings and the county has budget hearings, Everybody gets riled up to last week in May. People need to understand this is a work in progress and get your input in early because, yeah, to be honest with you, I've always found once May comes, not much going to change. Yeah, no, exactly right. Exactly and the right. schools actually last year put it on their weekly updates that they mm -hmm. sent out to folks. Okay. That's yeah, we do a robocall to ask people to uh, um, answer the survey. That was probably beneficial too. We can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or send it to, get it to the I don't know, both central chamber of commerce get chamber of commerce both central mm -hmm. committees let them put it out and you know it's just open and let mm -hmm. everybody have their Thank you. they yes. understand it's a lot easier and it's a very simple no. last year. okay that's all i have mr fister thank you i know Welcome. this is a lot of work but this is exactly that's good all right good so work with you. All right. okay we'll move into the next item the school calendar um we are we voted on two calendars we approved two calendars there is some um, 
so we, we had the survey, and you guys got a copy of the survey. Remember, we discussed the uh, results of the survey, knowing that the public wanted to make it after Labor Day. But we decided as a board that it would be ben beneficial to the students themselves. We are, our interest is the students to, um, to start it before Labor Day. So we've got some concern from um, some legislature, legislators and uh, still some parents that are confused. So we wanted to revisit the school calendar um, for after Labor Day, to start after Labor Day and see what that meant. In the event that we still stop the school day on Ju June the 15th, we stop the school year June 15th, start after Labor Day and go to June 15th, and what would that look like? So the superintendent's been working on getting that information. So we have um, a different person, of course, you know, Miss Julie Forbes, who has been wonderful. She's working on the format for the calendar, and the format looks different. What Miss Wright has up there is just a calendar in terms so we could see the dates, and she'd have to make that bigger so we could actually see the dates. But what we looked at is if we backed it up for one year, uh, I'm sorry, for one week, for five days, or, or to get it to, uh, I think it's September the 7th. I don't have it right in front of me. I'll clue up in just a second. Um, that would make school end around June the 18th if we did not use any additional school days. Now, what happens is, recall last year that legislation that happened that it gave school systems five additional days. So technically, we have till June the 22nd for children to be in school before we have to ask for a waiver from the state to allow them to continue in order to make the one 180 school days that are required so you know within that we certainly can you know if, if that is your pleasure we can go back and we can we can make changes we gave some suggestions uh, with regard to if we're going to make a change to this calendar to make any other changes that we might uh, need to make because we um, we did not have a designated day for high school parent parents of high school students to have a um, a parent conference day. So generally when the elementary and middle school students are having parent conference days, high school students are either in school or the teachers have a professional development day. So there was not a designated day for conferences. And so we could, you know, forward to, you know, that there's a calendar committee. So we can give the suggestion to the calendar committee to consider that um, and any other changes that may need to be made. We gave a, um, we have a, a sort of a list of, of running mm -hmm. suggestions. But in terms of this meeting, what you would need to know is that it would run us to June the 18th for students to be out of school, to be in school. Mm -hmm. And if we went beyond that because of snow days, we have until the 22nd before we'd have to request a waiver from the state. Now, if we have to request a waiver from the state, they require that we have shown, we've demonstrated, you know, our most sincere effort, right, in using any and all days available to us. And that's really going to depend on when an additional snow day is needed, because if you look at our calendar, you see we don't have any days, you know, for the second half of the year. Right about the end of January, we have the professional development days, which pretty much are the only days. Other than that, we have President's Day. We have the Friday and Monday around the Easter holiday, which are federal. We can't change that. And we have Memorial Day. Um, not a lot of days to play with. Our calendar is pretty tight. And so, typically, we've had bad weather after that right, day the that's bad, the critical right, day. The bad weather usually doesn't come before December. <laughs> mm. Well, my question is, what did what did that, holding it within June 15th, starting after Labor Day, I mean, obviously, that crunched up Thanksgiving and Christmas. And yeah, yeah so, so, what, so we, what does that look like? The June the 18th, 15th, you don't even have to worry about the 15th. Because remember, we have five days. And for 2021, it is June the 18th would be the day that school would end. If we added the five days so that we are, I'm sorry, if we added after Labor Day, a post-Labor Day start, the last day would be June 18. 18th. But we haven't done a community survey for 2021, correct? We did. Yeah. Oh, we did. Yes. We did. I knew we did 1920. We did. Remember, we did two. Yeah. We did two years. Both years. Correct. Okay. And and what you'll see is that the survey showed that parents did ask for post Labor Day for both years. 
when the presentation was given, the conversation was around when the end date for school would be. And based on that conversation, the board approved the pre-Labor Day start. For 20. 20, Correct. 21. Only Correct. because it ended on June. Because it took us so far down. Correct. Well, it ended on June 11th, which was a good date to end school. Correct. I was not aware that we could go to at least to June 22nd. Um, I guess I didn't ask. That came out a little later. Okay. Like, so because there was know. legislation. So mm -hmm. we can do that by the, I'm just looking at the calendar. We can do that by the state requirement. Correct. I was saying what it would look like if we said this is the day we want to end school, which we were talking It about. would look like they would start September 8th and then we'd be done June 18th. That's what it would look like. That's adding, keeping everything the same. Keeping everything, That's keeping everything, keeping everything the, same. the same. I'm saying what it would do, we would end up having to pull some days off of Christmas. No, uh, mm -hmm. no, it stays the same. No, no we, if we I want to move that, we go over if we want to move that up to June 15th, or in this case, it would have been June 12th. What does that do? I mean, our objective when we made our decision was not to bring have the kids in so long. It didn't have a lot to do with the state. I mean, it was up to us what we thought was right. For so, if kids. if you if you look at the calendar that's in board docs, um, so Thursday is the students are in school to June 20. I'm sorry, December 23rd. If we're going to talk about the winter break, mm -hmm. students are in school until Wednesday, December 23rd, um, and they are out for. December 24th and 25th, which is Thursday and Friday. Now, if you wanted to have students come in on um, Christmas Eve, is that what you're saying, to shorten? No, that's what I want to look that's, at. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, I didn't yep, know so take a, yep, So that's what that's there. And then, of course, you've got the, the Monday, the 28th, the 29th, the 30th, 31st of the following week, if you're talking about mm -hmm. um, shortening winter break. Those are the only days you have because the first is a, another federal holiday, so you're not going to be, um, right. students won't be in school on that day. Um, I think you're going to have a little uprising from the community uh -huh, if, uh -huh, <laughs> if uh -huh, you play around travelers. with that week. Yeah, go and yeah. see. I'm not, I'm not saying to do it. I'm saying what did it look like? We need five days if we're going to open up after Labor Day. Somewhere we got to pick up either add them to the end of the year or cut right. some days out in the middle. Mm -hmm. Five days. Right. And there's nowhere to cut in the That's middle of the year. In the middle of the That's right. Well, well, Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So may I ask, what's so magic about 180 days? The law. Wow. The law. How do yeah, they come Maryland, up a, upon that? It's, it's been there for so long, long. I don't even know. <laughs> it's Maryland. It's just been. Yeah. And you can't touch the Friday and Monday of. That's, that's the law by, Easter, by Maryland. Of spring Easter. holiday. And it's only Maryland. You can't touch. It's April the 2nd or 5th? No, you cannot. Yeah, that was a it's a Maryland law. Yeah, I got two other ones. The other states. Okay. Not we had 180 in Virginia Martin as well. Martin King and President's Day. No, I'm sorry. Martin Luther King and President's Day. Are they federal holidays? Yes. 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 Both of them are. Now, there is one time we used... We did use President's Day. We we snow. No, we did put them we, back in. Yeah, we had permission. Yeah, it, it, it snow. We did it one time. Okay, we did it one time. We asked permission to go I on was President's say, Day. Yeah, we did because we had so many, and that was so that year. With Sid will tell you, fourteen. So we asked permission to be able to use President's Day, and then it snowed on President's Day. Oh, good gracious! So yeah, it, it's the, that it's cut that worry. You know, yeah, it's just so. It, it, yeah. Well, and but you, we got off. We got off on that. We got off on that year because we tried that. Yeah, we did try it. So we got credit for we that. We did get credit for and that. And we got a waiver. Yeah, that was waiver it was probably for that 2010 last year. when we had those back-to-back -back blizzards. No, it, this was 2013 or 14. It was 2014. This is probably another. I mean, because what I'm looking at it is, we need five. Every day we can cut off five is less at the end of the year. Right. We have in-service days for teachers. Right. And that causes some issues because we have shut the school down for in-service. But what about changing that to a Saturday? <laughs> then you got to pay them. <laughs> you got to pay them overtime. To pay teachers to come to in pay on them Saturday. Overtime for that. Right. Yes, you do. No, we pay them 180 for Nine, teaching. Nine. And we pay them 89. nine days for service. 189. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. so, During the school year. Okay, so they'd, have, they'd be in that day teaching, then we then they'd, they'd, they'd want to. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be time and a half on Saturday. It'll be time and a half. They give it to us. The only way is to go the extra week. Good thought. 
Mommy, I mean, the thing no, is, either, either we got to pull some that. days out yeah. and we got to put everything on the board or we'll pull out a couple days. Coming back, back after Christmas, it's between Christmas and New Year's, they were no. I'm thinking only for the, the educational point of it. And had Coming back for two days, would, you, would they learn ridiculous. anything? No. That's what they I think for. that um, yeah. it would be a real problem because people tend to plan their vacations yeah. um, around that time because they we generally have that yeah. time. Everybody's asked us to move this. You know, I mean, they're asking us to do everything. That there's, there's so many days we got to be there, and we, we, we're we're going to have to talk about every day we can. You say there's federal holidays, we can't take them off, we can't switch them, mm -hmm. and then, you know, there's only so many, and we have in-service days that we have another nine days. Teachers yes. have to get paid. Um, so the bottom line is, to what I see is, you're mm -hmm. telling me we either front loaded mm -hmm. or end loaded. Right. There's no way to pull any dates out of here mm -hmm. from what you say. Well, it's it's exactly the conversation that you're having. By law, yes, we could take days at the end of December between Christmas and New Year's. Mm -hmm. Is it is the juice worth the squeeze is what I have a colleague yeah. who used to say to me. You, you know, you it, it, right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, here's a question, though. If we don't use any of the snow days, will we still be able to end at June 11th? I mean, all things being equal. Snow's only four days. We do. We, well, no, no, no. I'm asking. It. I'm just asking a logistics question. Let me go back and look. If we don't have Ooh. any snow days, and I'm not going to yeah, hopefully right. knocking on wood by saying that, mm -hmm. um, would we be able to stop? we we'll be able to end a little earlier than I mean, the it June would be. 18th. It would be the 14th. 14th. Mm -hmm. if we and didn't it would be a situation like we had last year. So they'd mm -hmm. come back on, on that Monday. Monday. <laughs> but we and God we wouldn't even put them in the calendar. You're saying. No, no, you have to make have the end, to. Make to the end date June 18th. Mm -hmm. But if we don't use our allotted snow days, if we don't use our allotted snow days, we, then I'm praying we would, that we, we have good weather. Always, we would always be quitting. The, those are just for snow. Exactly. So we, I mean, what, what, what I think the four days is, is a prudent thing to put in. Now, we can sit there and say we're going to close, but any snow day goes over. But it's chances of one or two snow days are. What are we required the, to? The trend has um, at least three, I believe. Um, the trend has been about four. Or last year, some districts had, uh, actually, we had about seven last year because we asked for a waiver um, and we were denied. So, denied yeah. Because we only put three in the calendar, right? Well, that, that was what was we... required. It was, we, you know, that was sort of an anomaly, remember? We, we don't year. know why. We, some districts yeah, some were approved, some districts them. were yes. denied. We don't yes. know why. Yes. Some years we asked for four, and I but think we might have asked for we five. We have four built-in days. We have four built-in built for in. this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Well, to me, one day that looks they like this. the easiest one to gain back is the 25th of November, the day before Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. That's a, isn't that a federal holiday? And it's a no. state holiday. Thanksgiving's no. on Thursday. Yeah. No. What's, what's required in Comar is Thanksgiving and the day after. Right. Yeah. Not so, the day before. so I'm just talking about it. No, to me, know. that's the first day that we're going to start talking about this seriously. Mm -hmm. The 25th is a day that I would say, if we're going to we move this thing after Labor Day, that? the 25th is definitely one we should pull. We could do it a half day, still get credit for the day. Yeah, that that way, the, you get credit for the day. That way, that's people a travel. For Dr. King, to have that is correct. Don't we lose so much educational? I mean, we're paying teachers all day. We're paying buses to bring them in. I think, I think that the point that Captain Kelly is making is that we get to count it as a day of school, but we don't keep them as long, and family can get off, families can get off on their vacation and do whatever it is, yeah, or yeah, employees, and, yeah, you know. We, can we get, get one, one or a half days to make a full day? No, no. because a day, a, whether they're in for a half a day or full day, it's a day. It's a, it's car, it counts toward that 180 days that we're required to make. I understand, but... I look at half days as only half a day of education. Mm -hmm. you know, the kids are only getting yeah. a half a day instruction. Mm -hmm. so the more half days you have, yeah, yeah. to me it hurts the students, I would think. Yeah, but it's not going to help in terms of the calendar because we still have to count it as a day. Mm -hmm. if I may, I'm sorry, making some of these other half days, make them a whole day. He's talking well, about not doing well, half days. Not doing too many half do days. That. Oh, so look at the, and some of this, so look at the reasons why we have those um, half days. So we could even start with. Um, I'm just asking you, is there one that we could not have? It wouldn't make any difference. It wouldn't, I think that if we made a half day for students into a full day, we're now cutting into teachers' prep time for grades or parent conferences. There are reasons why, and very significant reasons why we have those days so that are half days. looks like a day we could do if we want to, if we move it, it right now we're moving our day after Labor Day, mm -hmm. we're moving as far out in June. 
So instead of five days in June, we're going to be four days if we can do the 25th. If you did the 25th of November. Mm -hmm. Got that down. Historically, have we ever done that? And if so, how many times? I, I, I don't know if you've either. ever I don't remember if we've ever done that. I, I know that there are some districts. I, I believe that Baltimore County is in yeah. school on um, the Wednesday mm -hmm. before um, Thanksgiving. I don't know about any others, but I know Baltimore County is. Yes, but we typically but have not. You I said they yeah, are, well, but you can't. No, but we, but you yeah, can't. But we got to look at a different way. Substitutes and subs okay. for the whole year to plan still want to yeah. take the day off. So, oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, and then the, I can't And the difference subs. of moving the week from the beginning to the end, is there a fiscal impact as far as energy to run the buildings, not air conditioning? Not according to no. We had that discussion. Okay. Well, it's hot in August. It's hot in June. It's hot in June. Yeah. One of the, you know, if we want to talk philosophies, I'm a big proponent of, of before because, because after Memorial Day, the kids are done. The teachers are done, honestly. There's a lot of people, you've got spring, and it's just a psychological, it's easier for them to go back the in the summer when they're pretty much done with summer, and it's hot, and they can be inside. They're not outside. This is a philosophy I have. I think you get more education out of the kids and they're getting more education into the kids at the beginning and before Labor Day than the last, you know, two weeks in or three weeks into June. That's just the way I've seen it and the way I see children react, students react. On April the 2nd and 5th, spring break, right? the 2nd and 5th. Law. That's law. law. Yes. Can't touch that. Mayor, no. And then it's not in every state, but Maryland has that. We got to be off. We're half a day on that Thursday, but we got we can't be off that Friday. No. No. No, we can't be in school on Friday. And we can't be on Monday. Or no. Monday, right. And Martin Luther King Day, we can't. President's Day, we can't. Oh, President's Day, if we ask, we have to ask for permission. That's not a. But it's still a, it's a required day. We called, we asked for that only because we wanted to because, Well, because we had snow. so many snow days in January. Right. Make a good faith effort to and fix that. Right, fix right. it. So that was the only reason why we got the waiver for that. And that ended up snowing on that day anyway. But, but that's that a was required the craziest day to be school thing. either way. It was crazy. crazy. If we do Wednesday before Thanksgiving, you think teachers won't show up? Teachers will show up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. <laughs> it's, wild. it's very, very difficult. In my experience in the other previous districts, no people have already paid for their break. And quite honestly, they're going to leave Tuesday evening oh, yeah. where, as sure. soon as the young people come home yep. at, because they put in for vacation. Because more senior members of any company, they request that first. Yeah. The junior members, maybe not. But that would be your parents mm -hmm. that are off to grandmothers or sisters or brothers and if you do that I won't be able to get subs because the subs will be in the same predicament that they're traveling right. quite really, quite really honestly really? Wednesday the biggest travel day of the I year oh my goodness but, but this but this this isn't in this ahead. current calendar this is the next yes, calendar. Next year. Yeah, yeah, next year. Year. So Nobody. people need to plan ahead and if we're going to be here that day you got to be here if they if everybody doesn't want to go before Labor Day I mean but as a parent, I'm for starting after Labor Day, only because you hurry up, you get the kids in, and then they have another break, and they're off again. I mean, once they're in, they're in, their mind is on it. But they're only they off come for back for three or four days, they got a long weekend, and then they get lazy again, so I got to ramp them back up <laughs> to get back into it. But the parents complain so much at the end of the year about school going so long. Oh, okay. And we had a lot of that last year, and we're talking about a whole nother week mm -hmm. we're adding, and what are they going to say when they realize that? I agree with that, too, because I can tell you my son, here. two yeah, weeks later, Memorial is starting his summer sports. Yeah, so there's no break between school ending and getting right. into the summer right. sport. Right. Right. Yeah. It's it's a catch-22, folks. It is. It is. No so it is. we have the ones that... Yeah, so it's... Uh, and but even with the survey, this, they took the survey and they gave mm -hmm. their input, but then they were complaining big time this year mm -hmm. at the end of school. It may parents, not be the same yeah. people complaining parents, about parents, both ends. Yes, but anyway, mm -hmm. if we leave this calendar the way it is, and except starting in September 8th and going to June 18th, all these off days will not change, correct? 
all the days that are in here now. The the, t the co co yeah we left High yeah we left their the, days. We, we did the two days the two the two days in January where they have to have off for PD. The February fifteenth that doesn't change. The that was all things being the same. Holiday just doesn't backing change. it up. April nineteenth and twentieth. Mm -hmm. Those half days they stay there because of reporting to teach to reporting to parents. So. In essence, all we're doing is changing the end beginning date and changing the end date. Yeah, That's it. we 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 made we needed to make some changes to the number of days in the quarter or the trimester, mm, depending yes. upon whether you're middle school right. or elementary school, right. and the testing times yes. needed to um, needed to change. But President's Day, yeah, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, and then we just looked it up, and and we can't play around with the days between Christmas yeah. Eve and yeah. New Year's. Yeah. So those are those are untouchable. But the Wednesday before is yeah. is the juice worth the squeeze. Um, but what we did was we just completely backed it up a week and added that week at the end, leaving all the days off. The same. So and is that enough there to of change off. your quarters and your testing dates? We, we have to play around with that a little bit, you know, to make sure that um, teachers get their day, their half day for grading, um, preparation for report cards, parent conferences. And like I said, we wanted to make sure that one of those um, half days for high schools included parent teacher conferences um, for them. So, and it has to go, you know, before the calendar committee, which they're going to be meeting, I think, this week or next week. So, so the okay. teachers would still come back the week before. So we'd back it up, yeah. So yeah. new teacher um, week, week would before. start on the week of the 24th, okay. and then all teachers would start the week of the 31st. Okay. okay. So in essence, that would... Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, it would have to go to the calendar committee, and then they would come back to us next yeah, month. Yeah, they they'll present. They'll get a calendar ready that looks like this with the new dates and the times and everything in there, okay. leaving the four days for okay. snow um, built in there, and and we would present it to you at the November meeting. We would present okay. it to November. So, okay. so realistically, it doesn't. No dates we can pull out right now, either because of federal law or. The only day that you did have to play with was that November 25th because Tuesday the 3rd in November, that's an election day, so we, we can't play with that. We would move around that, so you see in green November 2nd, that's a, um, a day for professional development. We'd move some days around so that they were consecutive and made sense so that we weren't breaking it up and then we have parent conferences, that kind of thing we move around. But that doesn't impact the number of days children are in school. So the 25th is the only day that's I'm not saying it's worth it, but it's the only day it's an option to pull out. Well, I think we should give that to the committee and let them at least sure. say that's an option. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do it or not? Mm -hmm. And then do we want to do it or not? But it, at but studying this whole calendar, well, all the questions this board's asked, that seems like the only date that's feasible to pull out. Might not be rational, but yeah, it's feasible. Sure. sure. We've written that down. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and, then, and th then the thing is going to go, we'll go four days less, or I'm sorry, we'll, after they it's going to be tacked on to the end. Correct. And as educational people, do you feel, I mean, I agree with that starting before Memorial Day is a problem only because kids get ramped up. Labor Day. And I don't, Labor Day, I don't know if they're ready to go then, but, you know, Airflay, I think, is better. I will grant you, they're not going to be in school in June either. No. You know? no. But, 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 is, but is there either, to you, either balance one way or the other that's more devastating than the other except public opinion? I think it is absolutely public opinion and what people prefer because I have been in districts where we had it before and I've been in this district where we have it after. Okay. So it, it, you know, it is absolutely public opinion. I can tell you that Memorial Day, Captain Kelly has an absolute, absolute valid point. The, the kids absolute are done valid. and the teachers, teachers are done. Um, and the superintendent is pretty much done as well. <laughs> but, you know, we, we do what we have to do. And, 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 I can the... and I can tell you, just like you said, when we had to come to school on the 17th, which was a Monday. It was brutal. And parents brutal. complaineth yes. mightily. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a school day, and, and you have to make 180 it. days. You, you can't have it, you know, both ways. Either you're going to start earlier, end earlier, you're going to start later and mm -hmm. end later. And we it's, have to enforce it to our staff that they have to be here because that is their, their commitment. 
And well, it's not so much of a problem with staff. I may have had two or three staff people right. that they're, had pre-planned vacation, mm -hmm. boom, right after school. And, and you know, you, you grant that. They've got money on the line. The but right. now we're talking a year in advance. Um, that's why we do a two-year calendar now. Mm -hmm. And we would expect that everybody would plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at some of the states in the South, and they go um, back to school the middle of August, August but they're out at the end of May, okay, yeah. and there's very logical reasons for that work. Um, sometimes it's because of climate that they've yeah. made those decisions, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's also other things. Yeah. And we try getting them we're kids not in real August flexible first. here. You know, our our parents don't really like change, and they like that after Labor Day start, but it costs them too. But keep in mind, though, our athletes. They're starting August. Oh, sure. They're in oh, their yeah. August. They're, they're out there. Right. Band, they're, they're, they're out there. In August. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In August. The football players there's are in no the, way to the start room after all summer. And really, it's Labor Day and then before the Labor Day. That's physically. Yeah. Yeah. It's it doesn't awesome. give us 180 so days. Really you're going to go past your. Two weeks easy. Yeah, you're going to just, you can't do it with everything that's required. Yep. So the question I see right now is we go to. Uh, calendar committee. Mm -hmm. We've got one day we can play with, the 25th, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I understand, mm -hmm. we all understand, mm -hmm. is questionable as good, goods and pros, that's going to be a correct inside. And then it's going to extend a year into June, farther June. into June. It'll put correct. it into June, but June 17th, basically. Right. Right. June, just 18th, like a Wednesday. Yeah. Well, it could be, yeah, Wednesday. Because then if you get back too close to that yeah. one day, Monday, that's a real cluster. Well, that's, that's what happened this past that, year. Yeah, that didn't yep. happen. Yeah, it ended on Monday. But, but that was good because it, in the high school level, good, they had yeah, the, that was a makeup test day. So that, in regard, you know, yeah. gave them a whole weekend Very to few get people ready. Came yep. as long, unless they had so a makeup out. test. So. Yeah. So that, I, I guess that puts us out the 17th. So 18th you're right. The, oh, yeah. If, if they took off the 25th of November, it would be the 17th of June. Would be With the all being date. things being equal, correct, snow and, and days. only Don't go over any right, snow exactly, days. and yeah. only four it's snow days. Snow days. Snow days. And oh, oh, Mr. P pulled up our average for snow days. So eighteen, nineteen, we had four. Seventeen, eighteen, we used seven. Sixteen, seventeen, we used two. Fifteen, sixteen, we used nine. Oh, yeah. And fourteen, fifteen. I'm sorry, fifteen, sixteen, we used six. And fourteen, fifteen, we used nine. nine. That was the year. So, so four, four is not 28 days. That was crazy. Four was no, last that's, year. That's hopeful. I mean, we're not, we can't yeah. count on anything less. Yeah. Well, if you go by the Farmer's Almanac. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a snowblower for sale this year. So. Somebody needs to buy it because well, I don't need it. <laughs> we're out of this job, I can tell you. Exactly. That well, would know, be a the, disaster. The other thing to consider is in a year like this year where we've typically this week, teachers have been off, our schools have been closed because of the MSTA, you know, right. convention. Mm -hmm. So we're in session on Friday. So teachers have typically had a break. They've had a Correct. day off. So they've not, they'll not get a break until November. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, yeah. just to advocate for them, as you all know, yeah. teaching's yeah. difficult. Yeah. It's, it's, it's challenging. challenging. And, and teachers get tired. And then yeah. it's kind of full circle back to substitutes. Mm -hmm. Then people start taking off they might get sick so just, just something to consider yeah and part it of it was teachers did complain they said you know we start the year with professional development and we don't have time to get professional develop dedicated professional yeah, development exactly. again until January yeah so we've gone the half of the year Without. and so this October the 18th allowed them to have an opportunity to have professional development with our students in the building that they could implement then immediately what they got from that development it instead gives, of yeah. that lag they also they constantly voted had. to cut back we used to have 10 professional development and mm -hmm. they cut that back so here's a question mm -hmm. and something that speaks to what mr smith was getting to could we look at the physical impact the fiscal impact of having a pd day on a saturday once a semester just just to you know that way they, I, I, and I know it's asking somebody to give up their day, but, you know, like we talked about safe schools. We could have, a, a, you know, security kind of a day or, or um, training for, you know, um, medical training, what we, CPR and that kind of stuff and offer. And so are you saying just I don't know. I don't know. To, uh, well, I just want to be sure. Know. I can, what my mind is going to in, we used to do this, um, you know, we did it a couple of ways. We did, as we were transitioning to Commons Core Standards, which have changed names multiple uh, times yeah. now, we used to do a four-hour Saturday, and we had uh, 
a couple thousand teachers to, you know, right. 1,800 teachers one yes. Saturday to do. But um, are we talking about in addition to whatever professional development is happening, well, just come in on a Saturday? I don't even know if it's feasible for us. No, I, just, I, think, just I think what we're looking at is... Like are you that, saying training? Is, no, it's due a Saturday, and that opens up one of these green days on the calendar. But those green days still have students. If it's a slash, it, tells, okay. it still has students, because it's a half day. Your blue and days are all. Yeah, the blue days are the off okay. days. is another option, and, and okay. how if we, could, if we could fiscally you know, take care of it, and that would give us an option for one of these days. But the students are still going to be required to come those days, Tammy. Even yeah, yeah, oh, I get that. I'm, I'm, just, so, I'm so. just offering the Saturday as a PD day oh. well, regardless guess, of the calendar. What does that do for us? Yeah, for right, exactly. It doesn't do anything and for the And if we calendar. can afford it. It doesn't do anything for the calendar. I want you to know. That's the point. I, I guess I'm, I'm thick-headed. We have one. If, uh, I'm a typical it, it's it's a Saturday. Saturday. if we have a day that's an in-service day for teachers and they're not teaching school. 200. You know, that's 180 to 189 rule. Only have two of those, right? If we take one of the days, of, instead of having an in-service day during the week and we have school, oh, no. and then we had the teachers on the Saturday, they just get out earlier, and the adult, you know, that's an in-service day. It's kind of a wash, isn't it? Isn't it a wash? I don't know. Well, so I'm looking at our calendar, and so yeah. look at, if you looked at, um, yeah. Um, October the 16th and November the 2nd, right. those are professional development days um, where, MSD, right? No kids are in school. right, where no kids are in school. Right. Exactly. That is an option. So we, I'd have to check Homar for the requirements if there is, if it can be a Saturday counted in there. I don't know off right. the top of my head. Well, I can check Homar. No, I think the professional development I'm, I'm, days. I want to say no. The professional uh, development days are not the state requirement. The, that's, that's each district of, has their number of days that's our, that's our negotiated in their contract. Right. I, 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 know, I mean, the teachers would be. Well, I didn't want to open this up a can of worms. I'm no. just offering it. You're as, asking, just yeah. asking. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Mr. Fister did some quick math, and it's, I'm assuming that was all of our teachers. For, if I had uh, to do a quick math to, to pay teachers to come in on a Saturday, all of our teachers for how right. many hours? A, a day? I just did a, full a day. day. Did a day. About two hundred. Two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, what's that? Oh, what's that? <laughs> but but right. you do have a point. <coughs> that breaks free because every single the, there are four days in here, at least four, where the students are not in class. The teachers doing professional development. Yeah. Well, if we move those over to, or at least one or two over to a Saturday, then you're asking. You're also asking them to, to give up a day off. Right. And now finding daycare. Right. Work now a six driving day week instead of a possibly from out of the week county week to come in. Tired. And then want us to find $200,000 paid for it. Say that again. Okay. That's, that's, that's over. You're asking <laughs> teachers to give up a day off. Yeah, no. And to find daycare for some of them. And to drive in from out of county if they're living in Rondo or Caroline. Or wherever. That's a lot to ask, I think. Day week. Well, what I, I mean, I, I'm burnt out by Friday. Week. I can't imagine mm -hmm. having to come in again and do another no, I'm trying clinic. to see if it's instead of a professional development, just changing the day of a professional development day. But if we have... But if kids you would still have school, kids, right? Then they yeah, have to be still be you have a good point. I was. And God bless them. I know my kids. God bless them for having a full classroom of them. Yeah. Nope. No, no. I'm. I didn't. I'm not trying to. I'm trying to. Uh, I'm, yeah. I forgot that part. Okay. It's okay, seven o'clock ish. Seven. So what? Uh, what else are we? So what is the? So we'll. So we're going to take this, this November twenty fifth to right. the calendar committee. Um, I also have a note to consider that half day, um, and we will expect that we'll have a calendar to present to you. And if we move it back a week, it will be that school could stop on June seventeenth. It would start on September eighth. Stop on June seventeenth. With all things being the same, on if except for the November twenty fifth. With all things being the same, school would end on June 18th. And we'd have four snow days, too. And we'd have four snow days in both scenarios. Okay. And otherwise, so we will, And we that's when we will take 14th. a vote on whether to accept that change in the calendar or stay what we voted on already. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good analysis. So under um, future meetings and events, November 6th is our school board meeting. And November 20th is our work session. That's all we have coming up for meetings. Any questions, anybody? Okay, then we will break. Um, I need a motion to go into executive closed session.
Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this body, public body, has jurisdiction and to perform an administrative function. I have a motion to go into closed session. Do I have a second? Second. A motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, going in closed session. Thank you.